Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. This is a conference meeting of the City Council of the City of Orange Township held in Council Chambers, City Hall, 29 North Day Street, Orange, New Jersey, on Tuesday, December 17, 2019, at 7.13 p.m. Roll call. Councilman Coley? Present. Councilman Jackson? Here. Councilman Johnson, Jr.? Here. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Here. Councilwoman Williams? Present. Uh, Councilwoman Wooten? Here. Council President Eason? Here. Also present is Joyce Lanier, the City Clerk, Chris Hartwick, the Business Administrator, Vaughn Parchment, um, Law Department, Marty Mays, Planning and Public Works, Adrian Matt, the Finance Director, Marlon G. Towns, Legislative Research Officer, and Quinn Phils, Clerk's Office. Please stand for a moment of silence. Good evening, everybody. We want to dedicate this moment of silence to Jersey City and what happened there last week. And also, as we do that, let us pray for our police officers and their safety as we do this moment of silence. Amen. Please be apprised, anyone wishing to discuss agenda or general items shall sign one book. Each person signing the book will be allowed to speak for a maximum of five minutes. The requirements of NJSA 10 colon 4 dash 9 et sec, the Sunshine Law has been met. A notice of this meeting was published in the Star Ledger on July 5th, 2019, and the record transcript on July 11th, 2019, posted on the bulletin board in City Hall and filed in the office of the City Clerk. Uh, matters for discussion? You want to do housekeeping first? Let me just do a few housekeeping. Uh, if you want to speak tonight and you have not signed the book, it's outside on the table, please do so at this time. And also, we will conduct this meeting in a professional manner. There will be no speaking out, no loud talking. If you feel you need to have a conversation, we're going to ask you to step into the hallway. And the first we're having up Council is President. the... Council President, yes. before we start, at the top of the meeting, um, the walk-on regarding the students, can we suspend the rules and do that one at the top so they can do it while Assemblywoman Timberlake is here? We, that's what we were doing. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. And just for the record, Jeffrey Chief Long from the Fire Department arrived, 715. So we're going to call up the students first. Are you ready, Mr. Copeland? <laughs> Good evening, council members. Good my, good name is, my name is Dr. Rose Morris-Rowe. I'm an assistant principal at Park Avenue School, and prior to that, I was a teacher at Oakwood Avenue School. Today, we're doing a presentation on Assembly Bill A5102 because we need to discuss the importance of raising awareness at our school level. Our first guest is Julia. Hello, my Hello, my name is Julia. Hmm? Hello, my name is Julia McCullough, and I'm in the fourth grade. I will be discussing the effects of vaping. According to Wikipedia, an electronic cigarette is a handheld, battery-powered smoking device that can damage your lungs and your health. Mm -hmm. E-cigarette is also known as vaping. The user is referred to as a vapor. Instead of cigarette smoke. The user inhales, inhales aerosol, commonly called vapor. Nia Mora Hay. 
Hi, my name is Nia Morhe, and I am in the fourth grade at Oakwood Avenue Community School, and I will be discussing the dangers of vaping. Vaping is still bad for your health. It raises your blood pressure and spikes your agiline, which increases your heart rate and the likelihood of having a heart attack. There are many unknowns about the vapor, including what makes up the vapor and how they affect physical health over a long term. The vapor contains harmful chemicals and verified particles that are inhaled into the lungs and exhaled into their environment. Vaping can lead to smoking cigarettes, which are kind of drugs. Now you know why vaping is bad for everyone. <laughs> Joelle. Hello, my name is Joelle Cardenas, and I am at the fourth grade Oakwood Avenue School. And I'm going to be talking about nicotine effects. Did you know every time you smoke your e-cigarette, you are committing an act of suicide? Because smoking causes cancer, you are more than likely to die. Nicotine is highly addictive. Once you start, it's hard to stop, even though you harm other people who inhale it around you. Although death is more serious effect, there are many others that can make your life miserable. I hope you think twice before smoking your e-cigarette again. <laughs> Oscar Martinez. Hi, my name is Oscar Gonzalez. I'm in the fourth grade at Oakwood Avenue School. I want to talk about the bad chemical formaldehyde, which is in e-cigarettes. Formaldehyde is a respiratory inert that causes chest pain, shortness of breath, coughing, and your nose to run. Also, the chemical formaldehyde can cause cancer and has been linked to allergies in kids. As you can see, formaldehyde is a very dangerous chemical which is put into e-cigarettes. Children and adults smoke e-cigarettes on a regular basis. You have to ask yourself, why is Philip Morris putting their harmful chemical in the hands of children? Wait, I know. The answer is money. <laughs> Sorry, this district is not for sale. <laughs> <laughs> Nicole Williams. Not the Nicole Williams. <laughs> Hello, my name. That was a co close. Hello, to my, my name is Nicole Williams, and I'm in the fourth grade in Dr. Marshall's class from Oakwood Avenue Community School, and I'll. I will be telling you about the dangers of e-cigarettes and what it can do to you. When you smoke, you are putting chemicals into your body, and the chemicals are making you extremely sick. One of the chemicals in e-cigarettes is benzene. Benzene is the colorless, highly flammable liquid. Benzene is also responsible for the aroma around gas, around gases. Benzene in e-cigarettes is extremely dangerous toward people and all living things. This is why many people die from smoking. So make sure you don't smoke. Thank you. Khadija. Hi, my name is Khadija Miller, and today I will be speaking about the harmful effects in an e-cigarette. Did you know that e-cigarettes has metal in it? And these metals names are chlorium, nickel, and lead. This, this, these metals affect your brain very badly. The providers of the product use outstanding advertisement to sell this product. So if you are smoking or vaping, please stop. <laughs> Chantel Brewster. Good evening, Orange City Official Department, Directors, and Orange Residents. My name is Chantel Brewster. I am a seventh grader from Park Avenue School. And today, I will be talking about why is it important for teachers to teach kids the dangers in vaping and e-cigs. First, I would like to ask, what is vaping? 
Well, vaping is the inhaling of a vapor created by an electronic cigarette, or in other words, an e-cig. Now, why is it important for teachers to teach students about the dangers? I believe it's important to teach students about the dangers because the nicotine in these machines can lead to low blood pressure, flow of the blood to the heart, or a heart attack. Today's kids think that vaping is cool and the side effects that we hear on TV or anywhere are about are to just scare us into not vaping or to stop vaping. But what we don't know is that children are losing their lives due to vaping. 47 children have died from vaping and 29 have been hospitalized from the chemicals in vaping. These chemicals will ruin your lungs. The chemicals in e-cigs will turn your pink lungs into black lungs and when this happens, you will be more likely to be in hospital because what vaping does to your lungs is it triggers lung inflammation and lung tissue damage. Vaping isn't only bad for you, but for the people around you as well. When you vape or smoke outside or around people, the smoke you let out of your body will go into air allowing non-smokers to breathe in that nicotine. When this happens, you've now put other people's lives in danger. This is called secondhand smoke. You, now have, po you have now possibly put someone in the hospital because you're vaping or smoking. When vaping, it can lead to smoking real cigarettes. I am here to tell you that if you vape, you should stop. Because while vaping, you're shortening your life. When vaping, you are weakening your lungs. Janelle Brown. Hi, my name is Janelle Brown, and I am from Parkin in the seventh grade. Teens are constantly tricked into believing false information about Jules and cigarettes. We are led to believe that jewels are safer than cigarettes, which is incorrect. Jewel and corporations offer av often advertise their products as modified risk tobacco products. Jewel and corporations also have only recently stopped flavoring jewel pods, which was another thing that attracted teenagers. Companies are actively convincing teens to keep smoking. Jewel ads are plastered everywhere we look, on social media, on billboards, and in corner stores as well. Jewels are persistently diminishing the health of young teens, starting at the age of 13. Potential side effects of jewels include seizures, heart attacks, lung damage, and birth defects. As of December 17th, 2019, the vaping death toll has reached 52. If something is not done about the jeweling epidemic, teens and adults will continue to die. Thank you. Again, my name is Dr. Marsro, and I absolutely endorse Bill A51. A5012. It is essential that we provide instruction for our students. We teach them character development, proper hygiene, anti-bullying, and the dangers of cigarettes. It's time that we add e-cigarettes e to that list because as Oscar stated, our district and our children are not for sale. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Council President. <laughs> Council President, if I may. Can we just give those students another? And for Dr. <laughs> and now we're going to have any council members that want to speak. Yes, Council President, thank you very much. I, I just want to thank the school district in Oakwood Avenue School for Rom um, and the entire schools um, for getting in front of this uh, e-cig and vaping uh, issue. Um, for the life of me, I can't understand why anyone would want to um, inhale something into your lungs like that in the first place. But I'm glad to see our young people are being educated and um, seeing the dangers of uh, vaping and, and all the other uh, um, uh, e-cig uh, uh, devices. Um, keep it up, young people, because um, one day you're going to be uh, um, an adult, and I hope that you um, continue um, you know, this discipline that you have um, with not um, smoking e-cigs, and this also goes for cigarette and tobacco products as well, not just e-cigs. Thank you, Council President. Before we continue, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask our superintendent, I'm sorry, if he wants to come up and say something and then the council will introduce himself, and then the council will continue their comments. Dr. Fitzhugh. <laughs> Good evening, Council President, Council Members. I have laryngitis, so I'm not supposed to be speaking. Speak up. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be hard. <laughs> and the mouths of our children are most critical, yes. Yes. and I'm so appreciative of the Council to have this opportunity for our students from Oakwood Avenue to come and speak to our rising stars. To Mrs. White, our building principal, I thank you. Dr. Morris Rowe, we 
to JQ, Board Member Henry, thank you for your continued support of our students in the township public schools initiatives. Thank you. Mrs. White, the principal, would you like to make a comment? But I stand here as the proud principal of Oakwood Avenue Community School, and I am so very proud of my students for taking charge of this initiative because it is a very important health initiative. And I just thank you for giving them the opportunity to stand before you and support this resolution uh, in favor of Assembly Bill 5012. So thank you again. Thank you. All right, Councilman Jackson. Thank you very much, Council President. It's my honor to to pour some accolades on the young people who have stood up before us today. It's not always an easy thing. I'd like to also thank the adults who have guided them in this endeavor because public advocacy is what you're doing and that's very important. Um, what I'm hoping is that some of you look at these seats that we're sitting in and see yourselves here someday. Uh, running for office and representing your, your fellow neighbors and citizens and family uh, in elected positions like the Municipal Council, Assembly, uh, or in the state senate. Uh, I, I, I think that you need to understand things won't change unless we have good people with integrity who are into public service and not self-service in positions where they can change things for the benefit of the majority and that, uh, the most of us. That's what it's all about. So uh, as I sit here today and see these young champions standing on, uh, against uh, um, vaping, uh, I, I know they understand that they are facing billions of dollars of lobbying, you know, uh, hundreds of millions of dollars in pockets uh, of people who vote to support that kind of thing. Uh, and, and as this, that industry is unregulated at this point, um, efforts like yours remind us that uh, we have uh, other to be concerned with than, the, than um, uh, uh, our own pockets, I guess. And, and please think about when you get older, if you become a scientist and you're finding ways to help people be more healthy, if you're uh, whatever it is that you choose to do, consider public office and public service as an option. Um, it's something you can make a good living at and you'll get personal benefits every day when you're representing someone else and, and, and it really feels good. I just want you to know that, all right? And we're from, a lot of us are from Orange, so this is your hometown. Who but who other than you is going to be running the show in another 10, 15, 20 years? All right? Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for coming before us. Thanks so much, leaders. Councilman Johnson. Council President, thanks for recognizing me to speak to our, to our uh, teachers and principals and super superintendents and elected officials on the school board and the, the, challenge, the, the champion children that came out today. I just saw something the other day about e-cigarettes on television uh, and our, the health department or FHA, was, somebody was talking about how dangerous it was and I'm sitting in my living room saying, how can something possibly like that be in the marketplace when everybody knows that it's no good? And here we are in, in the greatest nation in the world and we have pollutants being sold across the counter uh, in, in, our, in our corner stores that everybody that's supposed to be in power that regulates our food and so forth knows that it's poison. And uh, I just want to encourage the young folks in the field that I'm in, I learned that how do you boil a pot of water from the bottom up? Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you guys, stir the pot this morning or this evening, you young folks stir the pot. If we as legislators don't stand behind you after the night, then we don't need to be legislators. You have my vote on running e-cigarettes clear out of Essex County. I thank you so much for showing up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Johnson. Great job um, to all of the students that came up from Oakwood Avenue School and Park Avenue School. I don't think you know how cool it is. You're sitting with an assemblywoman, like not just a regular person <laughs> is sitting with you. That lady right there makes like all of these big decisions and you're just sitting with her like, hey, right? <laughs> so that's a, so that's a, that's a kudos to you. Uh, and Mr. Oscar, Mr. O is that you? Mr. Oscar in the front seat? You, you, listen, listen. 
we I claim that you're going to be sitting in one of these seats. Do you understand me? When you spoke, I listened. All right. So, Miss, I had to write your name down. So, um, I just want to thank you for coming here because going to school and getting good grades is cool, but being active in your school is very, very important. So I know they took video. You can save this when you get ready to apply for college and things like that, and you can let them know you are part of a very, very big decision. Do you understand? Some of you fourth graders, raise your hand if you're in the fourth grade. All right, and then seven. Mm -hmm. All right, good job. Congratulations. And everything in between. <laughs> I am so proud of each and every one of you. Uh, Oscar, when you do a fundraiser, <laughs> that's a t-shirt. So make, uh, we're not for sale, that's hashtag it. we're that's not for it. sale. Not so that's it. your next fundraiser <laughs> for your school. Um, I know that the school district recently, and I don't know if they're continuing on, superintendent have done some civic engagement. Um, this is hands-on civic engagement. You came out, um, make sure that we get a copy of this video and uh, send it to you. You're gonna be on YouTube now. So make sure you look at yourself on YouTube and um, how more of an appropriate time for you to advocate for something when you have your assembly person who represents you here. So a uh, great job. Your advocacy has stretched not only here in Orange, but all the way to the State House in Trenton. Great job. And we look forward to continued success. And we'll see um, I would, if this bill has not passed, how you can possibly ask the uh, Assemblywoman if you can come down to Trenton so you can stand on the floor when this w bill goes up for a vote, OK? So continue. And make sure Oscar's there to say we're not for sale. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello, my fellow Oakwood Avenue students. I used to teach there, Ms. Mm -hmm. White, for a while. So it's, a, it's always interesting and it's always amazing when you see your fellow students or students of sisters and brothers um, show up for a council meeting or show up to do something very important in the community. What you've done tonight was you have been instrumental in writing a piece of legislation that's gonna go in the law books of Orange forever and ever and ever. So that's something amazing. So I applaud you for that. I applaud your parents for that, mm -hmm. too, also, for supporting you. Yes. So let's give our parents a big hand <laughs> for supporting you and standing behind you and probably practicing with you for hours for you to come up and say your speeches. But I want you to know it's important for you to always have a voice. And tonight, what you've done with your voices is we are going to hopefully vote up a piece of legislation that's going to be in the books of orange forever. And like everyone has said, that's your assembly woman sitting behind you, <laughs> Brittany Timberlake. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can go to Trenton one day and speak in Trenton with her. So <laughs> congratulations again, and congratulations, and thank you, Dr. Fitzhugh. Thank you for the teachers, Board of Education members, principal, and the parents and everyone else for having Oakwood come tonight. And a special thanks to Lewis Copeland, mm -hmm. who He's is in instrumental room. with this program. He's in the middle of something else right now. Oh, he is? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much for coming out tonight. Thank you. <laughs> I want the parents to stand up. All of the parents that came out. Woo! Parents, first I want to say thank you to you for starting them early and bringing them out and for the teachers and Dr. Fitzhugh for starting in the elementary schools to teach them the evil of smoking and how it can screw up your whole life. You know, your lungs will turn. Every time I see a young po person buying a um, black and mild, I say to them, do you know you could turn your lungs black? They look up like me and like, wow, but they still puffing. So. <laughs> I just want you guys to understand that it is important that we educate our young people early so by the time they become teenagers, they will know that be aware, do not smoke, do let, not let the peer, peer pressure get to you because my friend is doing it, I'm gonna do it. Stay away from the cigarettes and the parents, please, please support them. Figure out what your kids are doing. You need to watch them, make sure that they're hanging with the right people and doing the right things. 
that as we all support them as they grow up, and young folks, I work in a school every day, so I know what goes on. And I'm so proud of all of you that had the courage to come to the mic tonight, because a lot of students would not have done that. But I want to thank Dr. Fitzhugh for being out here to support his students and making sure that this continues throughout the year. And if the council can help in any way, just let us know. And we'll come in and have some people do some speaking and educating the kids on smoking. And we have to be, and let me say that, we have to be their role models. Because you can't talk about not smoking and they see you around the corner smoking a cigarette. <laughs> so we gotta be their role models and make sure that we do the right things in front of them so they don't emulate the things that we do. So thank you so much and thank for everybody that came out. We look forward to seeing you on your next project and the next thing. And you might want to take your legislation to some of the store owners on Main Street and just let them know. Mm -hmm. They should not be selling these things to kids. <coughs> so you guys can make that a project also. Go vendor to vendor and say, what are you selling today? We don't want you selling e-cigarettes. <coughs> and good luck and keep, it, keep up the good work and the support. Thank you. <coughs> now, if the, what were you saying, uh, Mr. Yeah, okay. We want you all to come up and take a picture. Do we have a camera? Yeah, we do. Yeah. She's speaking out here. Assemblywoman Timberlake, we're gonna come up here. Come up here. Yeah, come everybody. Up, here. up top. Can you see everyone? Yeah. Yep. Stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> Say cheese.
You ain't send it. You ain't send me. Oh, wait, no, I got it, I got it. Uh -huh. You had a slow. Now we're going to have a presentation by Assemblywoman Whitney Timberley. <coughs> Thank you so much, Council President Easton, um, to the distinguished members of Council, um, friends, residents. I actually don't think I have a presentation after seeing what a real presentation <laughs> looks like. <laughs> They've done an amazing job, and it makes me so incredibly proud to represent them um, in the city of East Orange as their state assembly person. Many of the young people may not know what an assembly person really actually does, but we get to write laws, um, just like the city council does. So mm -hmm. when the city council writes laws, it gets applied to the city, and when New Jersey State writes laws, it gets applied to the entire state. And um, I see it almost as a gift and, and, and a calling. We should all love what we do. Um, every day and I do love what I do and I'm very humbled to be able to do it so um, I know that this uh, e-cigarette bill is very important to the leadership of the state and the assembly is certainly in uh, lockstep on one accord with this with this piece of legislation and it's something that has to be done because we have to protect what I believe is one of the greatest resources of this earth and it's our minds mm -hmm. so um, I'm so encouraged by the superintendent and the principal, um, both principals, vice um, as well, and what they're teaching our young people because it seems like civics and social studies in some districts have, has actually been taken out. Mm -hmm. And we really need to start to educate even from young about issues and teach people how to respectfully advocate for their opinion and their cause, right? So I'm just so encouraged by you all, okay? Um, so, 2019 has been an awesome year. It's been, this is my second year in the state legislature. Um, we've been able to do a lot of great things as it pertains to the city of, of Orange. Um, one of the major bills that we've been able to get done that I was a prime sponsor of was the $15 an hour minimum wage. Um, and as we know, that's going up over time. A lot of the bills that I focus on have to deal with economic justice as well as housing um, because I see it as if someone doesn't have an opportunity to advance um, economically or doesn't have a home to go to, how, how much can our children concentrate if they don't have a home to go to, right? Mm -hmm. And um, it really is the ground zero of everything else is a home. Um, so. We also got restoration to the housing trust fund that helps developers to offset the cost of including affordability during their building projects. I think that should be important to the city of Orange as there's many developers, um, including your own housing authority, uh, which does an awesome job. Uh, Walter McNeil is, is, is amazing. I'm impressed with him often and I've known him for years prior to being in elected of office. I was just a housing advocate coming before podiums like this, not looking to run for office, but looking to make a difference just like you saw the young people doing. And uh, Walter and I's paths had crossed. 
Um, and also HANDS, I know you have an awesome CDC here in this community. Um, HANDS are doing really great work and have, have been uh, involved in that organization um, for quite some time and support. So, you know, the, we also did a bill that is extremely important to not only the city of Orange, but communities of color all over the nation. Um, it was a bill that was originally started by our now Lieutenant Governor Sheila Oliver whose seat I was able um, to uh, be elected to fill her vacancy. Um, and that is the independent investigation in the event someone loses their life during interaction with law enforcement. Um, it was a major bill. Um, officer, we need you, okay? Mm -hmm. And I love our police, mm -hmm. absolutely. If something happens, we're not gonna call the Ghostbusters, we're gonna dial 911, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. right. Um, this bill had uh, nothing to do uh, with being anti-police officer, absolutely not. We cannot be anti-police or first responder. We have to support them. And God bless that family of five children who said goodbye to their daddy for the last time last week, which is just so sad. Uh, but you know, when we look at historical events and then even um, just throughout the nation, and even in the state of New Jersey, uh, the force report had come out about uh, excessive use of force. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see the factual data about how minorities are the ones disproportionately mm -hmm. at the other end of that excessive use of force, despite there being similar crime rates amongst all ethnicities. You know, you have to do something, right? So the bill says that in the event someone loses their life during interaction with law enforcement, that there'll be an independent investigation that occurs and that it has to occur in a county in which the incident didn't. Mm -hmm. That's where, if it goes to trial, the trial has to happen in the county outside. Um, that was major and I was so grateful. Um, a lot of the citizens of Orange, we actually uh, solicited the help and it was a very grassroots movement. It passed the assembly by one vote mm -hmm. and then um, we had to advocate for our governor who I am in support of um, and also many of his initiatives we've worked together on um, but we had to convince him to, to sign it into law, and he did. Um, so very grateful for that. Uh, there's some other pieces of bills, but I'm not gonna go on and on, because you probably wanna go home. I know I have to go and bake Christmas cookies pretty soon, <laughs> <laughs> right before rocking my little baby boy to bed. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm sure there's a lot of things that I am forgetting to mention. Mm -hmm. I know that New Jersey Transit, um, in this past budget season, I'll, I'll close with this. In this past budget season, uh, we got uh, several things for the district. We saved East Orange General Hospital, which is a major employer of the city of East Orange, as well as the city of Orange. Um, we did that by way of a grant. And uh, we're looking for long-term sustainability solutions for that hospital. As you know, community hospitals, again, throughout the nation, it's a trend, have been um, not able to sustain and remain open. And what happens is that creates monopolies in the healthcare system, and you don't really have access to choice in healthcare, or you might have to travel further than what you ought to want to <coughs> in the event that you're sick or there's a state of emergency, right? You wanna get to the facility as soon as possible. So we don't want our hospital to close, and I know that Orange is no a stranger to having a hospital close, as we know what happened with Orange Memorial, but we are working hard to make sure that that's not the case for East Orange, which again, serves the, the, the greater oranges. Um, we also made sure uh, that Montclair State University, they, they actually graduate the most diverse class. Again, many residents from Orange um, go there. They also have uh, renowned programs mm -hmm. and they're doing really great stuff, but unfortunately they were about, I, I believe it was the second uh, lowest uh, reimbursed institution in the state, even though they're doing so great. And it is a female president. I said, well, it's like that, right? They know that we know how to make lemonade out of lemons. <laughs> so, no, but we said, no, I said, absolutely not. We need to get you the money it is that you need because if you're doing this with a little, imagine what you could do with a lot. <coughs> um, so I think that's important for the Orange Residents Free Community College, uh, which was the initiative of the governor. It was those who make $45,000 and below could qualify, um, but that income number actually it is parallel to a lot of grants that are already available to that income level. 
So a lot of people who are making 45,000 and below are going to co uh, community college for free anyway. So we raised the ceiling, it's now $65,000. I would like to see that go up. Um, New Jersey Transit was a major push uh, this budget. I'm very disappointed in the way our train stations look. And I've been working very hard to try to drive dollars into the district. We did drive a million dollars into the district. Um, I know that Orange had a beautiful rehab that was done um, maybe, I don't know, what was it about, Chris? Probably eight years ago or so. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was, it's really a lovely train station, but there's more than one train station in Orange, mm -hmm. and we really need some TLC on all of them. But East Orange has not <coughs> had um, any real rehabilitation in, I don't know, Chris, if you would know how many years, but I certainly can't remember. 40? Um, right, so. At the, at the beginning of Bowser, I'm not yes. here. At the beginning of Bowser. Yeah, it's in a long time, about mm -hmm. 40 years. And um, you, can, you can certainly tell. Mm -hmm. It needs mm -hmm. a facelift for sure. And um, we got a million dollars for the train stations, but unfortunately it's been that, as well as the Montclair State money, has been frozen in the budget. <laughs> so we are asking for you know advocacy just to reach out respectfully, just like we saw the young people do, to just hey, call the governor's office and let them know, you know the, how important this is to you and why it's important to our community. Our train stations are literally crumbling and falling down. Um, my goal for this budget uh, coming up is at the top of the list, again, is the train station. And I want money also for both East Orange and Orange so that we can do a rehab along that corridor. I think it would be awesome to be able to do something in sync. So we'll see. There's a lot going on. Um, and. I just wanted to come by and I want to thank Councilwoman Donna Williams. I want to thank all of the council members for just indulging me for a bit <coughs> and um, for your work and for your advocacy because you work very hard. This is a thankless job. We don't do it for thanks and we don't do it for praise. We do it because we want to serve people and we can't make everyone happy, but we try, right? We, it's the gift and the curse of this job. You can't make everyone happy, but we, we, we break our backs certainly trying because this is very humbling to be able to serve people in this capacity. Thank you. Council President, can we just Thanks, Council Woman Williams. ask Assemblywoman a question? Can I ask Assemblywoman a question? Sure. Okay. Assemblywoman, I know you, as you said, you do a lot. And while the superintendent here, I just wanted him to hear that there was a bill that was passed um, yesterday and. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the discrimination of, or there can't be discrimination for our hair. Mm -hmm. And um, I hope there will be continued lessons about that, Superintendent, as that bill flows down right. um, so that we can begin to teach uh, people, our babies to look in the mirror mm -hmm. and, and see their self as beautiful the way they are. Right. Mm -hmm. And then um, we have a large um, reentry community and there was a, um, a bill that went forward um, mm -hmm in terms of per, uh, persons on parole and probation yeah. that they, they can now vote as well. And that will impact our community yeah. in such a way that I think that's a big deal. Yeah, Thank absolutely. You. I'll just speak real quickly on both mm -hmm. of those. So the hair discrimination bill, Angela McKnight is a prime sponsor as well as myself and a few others. And um, really it's all in the name. Uh, I remember growing up and hearing, well, you can't have your hair like that if you want to you know, if you one day want to work in corporate America, or I would hear them say that to some of the older children who were going out to look for a job. Now you have to cut your braids because you don't go on a job interview with braids. Why not? It's our culture. It's a part of us, mm -hmm. right? So we can look professional while also having ethnic hairstyles. Why not? It's not about hairstyle to me. It's not about, you know, um, professionalism. And when you saw what happened with the young man who was on the wrestling team and he was made to cut his locks. Um, that was just, and he, what, 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 what just broke my heart was that he loved wrestling so much that he was willing to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's because he's, he's a kid. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is, this is discrimination across the board and we have to be, black is beautiful and we have to be proud of our culture and, you know, and walk in it and not feel uh, like we have to apologize for that in which grows from our scalp, which is beautiful in, in every form that it grows. Um, the other bill, which is the for the re-entry, mm -hmm. you know, um, I'll tell you what we, we spoke about in caucus, just talking to anyone, um, you know, on either side of the aisle that may have um, been hesitant about voting in support of restoring voting rights for those who are on parole, who have been released from prison. If you agree with the fact, I'm talking facts now, <coughs> that black peoples were brought from Africa and placed here 
and were handled as cattle and were not given the right to vote, and then you agree with the fact that the Civil Rights Bill was passed, well, emancipation, but then the Civil Rights Bill was passed, walk with me on this, this, this long line of history, and mm -hmm. which after that bill, I'm sorry, prior to, there was, um, they figured out how to do Jim Crow, how to keep, again, black peoples from voting. Now, if you agree with the fact that, again, black peoples and brown peoples are disproportionately incarcerated despite the same crimes, are put into jail, it may be economic, may not have the funds to afford representation, or sometimes it may be that they are targeted because of biases of those who may be making the arrest or then maybe the person who's coming down on the judgment. That's why it's important to do racial bias training as well, right? So all of these things that I'm saying are factual, right? They're hard facts to hear, but they're factual. Then the only conclusion one could draw by preventing those who are then released from incarceration from voting is that you would be in support of upholding Jim Crow. The original Jim Crow laws, which said, sure, you can vote. Oh, sorry, but there's an exception to this rule. How many number of bubbles is in this bar of soap? If you can answer that, you can get your voting card. So we have to understand that our system is operating in biases and that voting rights are important for all people across the board. And um, time and time again, talking to different voters, I could be out there trying to educate someone. I can look in the eyes of a young man and I'll see his eyes drop and he say, you know, sis, I don't do politics. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you mean you don't do politics? Everything is politics. You have to, you know, you, you got to be involved in your community. <coughs> and then you'll see that he might be a little embarrassed. He says, well, actually, I can't. Probation. So, you know, this is about restoration of voting rights and we were able to do that. There's, again, there's so many other bills. Mm -hmm. Um, not to make a shameless plug at all, but if you ever want to keep up to what we're doing, social media for the New Jersey State Assembly is very, very active. Also, I have a, uh, my own social media pages too, so just <coughs> follow us on Facebook, Instagram, everybody's on social media, and you can actually see what we're doing for the community and provide input, because we want people to be involved. Thank you, Madam President, for your time. Um, Council President, I just had just two things for- Councilman McCauley. Yes, um, the, the last time you was here, um, I spoke about um, <clears throat> the expanding of the uh, ESIC ramp at 280 uh, West. Um, were you able to um, look into that or get that on your list of things to do list? Absolutely. Um, so as you can see, they're doing a project right now on the exit for us on the Garner State Parkway. Mm -hmm. But it is in discussion, and I hope to be able to report back soon with more uh, solid news. Okay. Um, and as you move into your new budget, uh, um, season. Um, I want to thank DOT um, for this year on um, repaving uh, Freeway Drive yes. uh, East, mm -hmm. but west. the Freeway mm -hmm. Drive West need mm -hmm. that same attention as well. I agree. All right, thank you. Yeah. Assemblywoman Timberley, you want to tell the audience where your office is in case anybody wants to come down and make an appointment to sit down with you? Yes, ma'am. Thank you for reminding me to do that. <laughs> so it's on. Um, if you come down on Main Street, we chose an office that was pretty centrally located. It is located in, in East Orange, but it's right there close to the border of Orange to be accessible to all members of the community. But it's on Main and Prospect Street. It's literally on the corner. We're still waiting on our signage, but um, it's where the Citibank used to be. I don't know if you remember that Citibank that used to be in the RPM development down there, right there on the corner. It's across the street from a new restaurant that just opened, which is Fusion, and then that's uh, in the same parking area as the ShopRite Shopping Center. So, you know, we welcome people. You can call us, you can contact us, and, um, you know, we're, we're, we're here. Anything to add? All right. Thank you for coming. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. You. Oh, you Council you. President. Yes, I think if some woman needs to get home and get fix them cookies. <laughs> Make an extra dozen, right? I agree. Get home safe. I agree. Butter or crystal? Butter. <laughs> and they are made, they are made from scratch. I'm glad you asked. It would have been but better if she had bought us a sample. I, right? I was going to say, <laughs> you, you got to bake on Monday night so yeah. you can come here. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.
Uh, please move the agenda. Council members, are there any resolutions or ordinances that you wish to discuss that's on tonight's agenda? Uh, council members, as you look through, we do have 11 walk-ons tonight. If you looked at the front of your table so you can see what's there. Council President. Uh, a couple of them uh, will be, you wanna go through the ones that's on hold and the ones right. that being withdrawn? So 413 is gonna be returned to administration. 414 through 418 is gonna be postponed. Hold on a minute, give me one second. 4.13 is going to be returned to administration. Mm -hmm. okay. 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18 is going to be postponed. 14, 15, 16. 17 and 18. 18. <coughs> oh, no, wait, I'm sorry, 4.13 4 is withdrawn and 4.26 is returned. 4.13 is going to be returned to administration, which means the same thing, but that's the proper language. Okay, and 426? 426 is gonna be returned to administration. Okay. Um, the recommendation is for 400 to be remain tabled. Mm -hmm. That's it. And 402? 402 is amended. Okay. Did we cover everything? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Does anyone have any questions on any of the legislation? Mm -hmm. I do. And 427 is amended too, right? Yes. Yes. <coughs> Council President. Yes, Council. Ms. If Jackson. I may, please. Uh, I have a question about uh, Ordinance 60-2019. It's an ordinance of the City of Orange Township amending the Lincoln Avenue Redevelopment Rehabilita Rehabilitation Plan. And uh, I just wanted some clarification on the parking issue. I know that we um, have a freeze regarding half of a parking space. Um, I don't know how they came up with that. And uh, I was wondering, is there a way that, I mean, is can we change it to one space? Per, per parking and also how many spaces are uh, planned for this development? Which one are you referring to? 60-2019. 50. 56? 60. 60. The proposed plan has a 1.5 parking ratio. Wonderful. But can you just explain what so that So what that means is that um, if there's 60 units proposed, there will be 93 parking spaces. Wonderful, because that, you know, that was a big issue. Um, that was that, the primary issue during the public forum. Certainly so, so I just wanted to have that on the record <coughs> so that people can refer to that and hear it straight from you. Again, um, I also would like to ask a question about, uh, this is similar Similar question regarding 400-2019. It's tabled. It's tabled. Oh, it's tabled, okay. Yeah. Table. Table. Okay, good. And let's see if there's any more. And Councilman Jackson, being it's tabled, yes, thank you me. can reach out to the business administrator and your concerns so <coughs> when it does come back, and everything would have been amended and done. Well, it's a similar, and uh, thank you for that. I, I'll okay. definitely do that. Um, let's see, 411 is still on, right? Yes. See, 411, that is a resolution calling for the study, for a study commission to review the Open Public Records uh, Act, and I, I, I think it's a very good idea. Um, in thinking of the demands on the clerk's office, I, I believe that there were some processes that might have been uh, uh, implemented to improve the efficiency of the process. Uh, how, how has the administration supported the clerk so that they get timely uh, receipt of, arc of documents? Business Administrator Hartwood? Did you understand his question? I, I did. Okay. Uh, um, so, uh, Joyce has undertaken, I should say, Madam Clerk has undertaken to copy me on uh, the transmission 
of informational requests to department heads yes. um, and to include a deadline and to include me on follow-ups so that I have knowledge and ability to be able to chase people for documents. Wonderful. And, and I, I wanted to you just to put that on the record uh, because that is a big um, thing that we do as a service and as we um, appeal for some study to come, uh, I, I, I wanted people to know that we are doing our best and taking uh, steps to ensure that these OPA requests are, are um, answered in a timely manner. I might add that yes. we're also reconstructing the website currently. Wonderful. And in the uh, newly planned website, the OPA tracking and responses um, and notifications will all be automated. Wonderful. Uh, and Councilman Jackson. Yes. We might want to, our, our own clerk said it has improved. Wonderful. I like to hear that. Uh, I, I saw, saw a resolution regarding the uh, use of the cloud or, or, um, and, and um, in, in consideration that uh, people may have an opportunity to access more documents uh, directly without open requests. Is that, is that something that is planned at all? Yes, sir. So um, in the new website, um, there will be links to all official documents Wonderful. by category. Wonderful. And, and that, that should make a big difference. Um, uh, uh, so long as instructions are, you know, comprehensively included so that people who may be intimidated by clicks uh, will be able to find what they're looking for. Yeah, except obviously anything that's privileged or exempt. That's right. Right. Confidentiality is important. Um, and the watchwords for the design of the new website uh, are less clicks. One, I like that. I like that. Less so we clicks. like to get to where people want to be within two clicks. Sure. Um, it, now, I know that there is a particular person who is obligated to um, input information. Maybe it's more than one. But is there someone who, I for example, instead of getting something from the, w the, the website, is there someone who we should submit material to if we want it to be included on the yeah. website? A if any of the council wants material included on the website, all they have to do is either provide it to the clerk with a request or provide it to me directly with a request. W wonderful. Thank you very much, Council President. Thank you. Any other council members? Uh, Council President. Yes, Councilman <coughs> Johnson. I, I would like I'd like to know on um, on 402-2019 if we are going into executive closed session. If the council wishes to go in, I have uh, we're prepared to do that, and a representative from the council's office, Gluck Walrath, is here. Uh, Council Council President, I do have a couple of questions. So you want to go into yes, closed I, session? Yes, I, I do. If the rest of the members. So, um, so say it. I support it. Council members, 402 closed session. I, I, I support that so he can have his question. Yeah, I support it. And I just have just one question on uh, 427, Council President. Um, 427, 2019, I see that um, says that this service is going to be provided for free. So, so, so how are they going to uh, get paid on the back end? So um, their business model is that they bill um, Medicare, Medicaid, and potentially insurance companies. Mm -hmm. If you're not covered by any of those, you still get the transport. And no citizen gets a direct bill. They go directly to Medicare and Medicaid. So, for example, um, I... I Let's say some person who doesn't have Medicaid or some type of um, insurance that mm -hmm. they could bill, will they help them apply for these services or they would just? No, they okay. just transport them. Okay, very good. Council President. Yes, Council One Williams. Do you, uh, Mr. Hartwick, is the representative here? From yes, he is. Okay. Um, can they come up and introduce yourself? Please introduce yourself. And state the name of your company. Hi, thank you. Um, I'm Vito Cicchetti. I'm the director of EMS for um, Prime Healthcare St. Clair. Hey, Vito, EMS. how are you doing tonight? Good, how are you? I'm good. Mm -hmm. um, so, we're in um, our hospital. Prime Healthcare is a 
healthcare system that has 45 hospitals throughout the uh, country. Mm -hmm. So um, in New Jersey, they own St. Michael's Medical Center, St. Clair's in Dover and Denville, and St. Mary General Hospital in Passaic. Okay. Um, St. Clair's has the EMS licensing, so we actually provide the service for St. Mary's, St. Michael's, and St. Clair's mm -hmm. as needed. Okay. Um, I think that goes into my next. Are you going to be housed at St. Michael's? No, we will be housed as soon as we find quarters in the city of Orange. Okay. Um, two ambulances 24 7, and you'll also get a supervisor that'll be in a fly car as okay. well 24 7. Okay. So upon a, us approving in the next step is you'll be looking for a place to house your ambulance and you just said 24 hours to ambulance we've actually yes. already met mm -hmm. and have identified some locations okay. okay and as a result of this new contract will you have to bring on more personnel yes okay and will you be looking to advertise local we've already started through um like facebook and all the uh, social media and we've already started hiring and interviewing some people already okay and well, you pretty Donna, much could you just ask how long is the training the EMT training is about 900 hours okay I, mm -hmm. and the state was looking to increase I think to 1200 hours and so that's even what if EMT you hire is. one a person I'm they sorry. have to go even if you hire they have to go through the training now we usually hire them certified already. Right. So okay. the only thing we have to do is put them through hospital orientation, mm -hmm. background checks, mm -hmm. um, okay. just the hospital stuff that we do in order for employment. Okay. Uh, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you said your um, prime is throughout the country and how many hospitals again here in Jersey, I'm sorry. In I'm sorry, in New Jersey, it's St. Michael's Medical Center in Newark, mm -hmm. St. Clair's Dover and Denville Hospital, mm -hmm. and St. Mary's General Hospital in Passaic. Okay. And Upon approval, if approved, their first day will be January 1st? 12th. January 12th. Okay. And will there be, does there have to be a transition with the current? Ms. We've Harper? already extended the existing agreement, mm -hmm. um, and they will work out the transition between the two companies. Between themselves, okay. Right. With assistance from the fire director. Okay. Um, thank you, Vito. And just out of, out of the, um, any of the hospitals that you work with um i'll hold off on that question thank you very much you're welcome right. thank you thank just, you just oh, one you? last uh, question yes, council council president. Coleman. um in the event uh when you have a situation where both your um buses or rigs or is out of service um how will you handle the um third call or fourth call that may come in when those rigs are so out of service our, my, our philosophy and what we have done, and we also did it with the city of Passaic when we started, we watch the volume, and as we see an increase in volume and there's a need for another truck or even a half truck, we will put on another truck. Um, as we start doing the transition and we start gathering some data, um, if it starts getting extremely busy, we'll send the truck from Morris County down here to be stationed down here with the two trucks as well. Okay, so the data that you retrieve so far kind of dictates you just to the two 24 seven? Uh, I never got official data. Um, the bid was for two trucks 24 seven. Okay. So that's what we put in for the two trucks 24 seven. So we looked at the data when we drafted the bid specs mm -hmm. and the volume calls for two trucks. Mutual aid would assist on the third if necessary. Okay. All right, thank you Vito. You're welcome. I thank you all for having me. All right, thank, thank you. <coughs> Any other questions or legislation? Move the agenda for the record. I'm um, sorry, I did. I'm sorry. I apologize, Council Wilson. Um, Mr. Hartwick, through you, 421-2019, the uh, youth soccer grant, can yes. you just, so can you just describe how that will be utilized? Mm. <laughs> I thought we what? Hang on a second. <laughs> something, something you don't. <laughs> so um, the soccer program aims to instruct players in the necessary life skills, which is leadership, team building, mm -hmm. conflict resolution. Mm -hmm. um, so um, it focuses on children ages 5 to 14, mm -hmm. um, and the program uh, only needs a parent registration form and a registration fee. Uh, uh, of I think $25 for orange residents or $40 for non-residents. Okay. So and that's the
the primary purpose of the grant. Okay, and it will be ran through our recreation department? Yes, it will. Okay. Thank you. For the record, Captain Dunn, the police department arrived at 7.30 and Alvern White, Deputy City Attorney, 8.01 p.m. Is there a motion to adjourn? Move. Second. Motion by Councilman Jackson and second by Councilman Williams. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Meeting adjourned <coughs> at 8.18 p.m. Council members, it's your pleasure. Do you want to take a five minute break or you want to continue? Give me five minutes if you don't mind, Councilman. Okay. We're going to take a five minute break. Marlon, that's what I was saying when I when I was up at the um when I was up at your public safety academy, most of our fire departments in Jersey were there learning EMS.
It's not a bad place to move. Good evening. This is a regular meeting of the City Council of the City of Orange Township held in Council Chambers, City Hall, 29 North Day Street, <clears throat> Orange, New Jersey, on Tuesday, December 17th, following the conference meeting. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Councilman Coley? Present. Councilman Jackson? Here. Councilman Johnson Jr.? Here. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Here. Councilwoman Williams? Present. Councilwoman Wooten? Here. Council President Eason? Here. Also, Presidents Joyce Lanier, the City Clerk, Chris Hartwick, the Business Administrator, Alvarin White, the Deputy City Attorney, um, <coughs> Deputy Chief Long, the Fire Department, Adrian Matt, Finance Director, Marty Mays, Planning and Public Works Director, Captain Dunn, Police Department, Marlon G. Towns, Legislative Research Office, and Quinn Fields from the Clerk's Office. The requirements of NJSA 10 colon 4-9 at SEC, the Sunshine Law, has been met 
A notice of this meeting was published in the Star Ledger on July 5th, 2019, and the record transcript on July 11th, 2019, posted on the bulletin board in City Hall and filed in the office of the City Clerk. There are no minutes to be approved. Reports. The City Clerk's office collected for the month of November $1,620. Orange Historic Preservation Commi uh, Commission collected for the month of November $70. There are no constable reports, OPA reports. For the month of November, we received 140 requests, 108 were completed, and six are pending. Council reports. Does any council member have any report they would like to give tonight? Just Councilman quick, Coley? Yeah, just real quick, Council President. Um, at the last ABC board, it was made known that the um, uh, the attorney for the ABC board has, uh, is moving on to another opportunity, and the ABC board will be uh, needing a uh, new attorney um, by the next period in January. I advised the EPA already about it. Okay. Thank you. Councilman Williams? Um, thank you, Council President. Mr. Harwood, just, did anything you wanted to say about the hospital regard from the finance meeting? Um, you mean about the resolution? R about the resolution, okay. and did you want to make a statement about Lincoln Avenue? I think it was sure. Okay. So um, there's a couple things uh, that uh, we want to announce. One, on January 8th, uh, there will be a public forum regarding uh, the uh, Lincoln Avenue, 595 Lincoln Project. That forum will be at 6 p.m at uh, Seventh-day Adventist Church of the Oranges. Um, the, um, there's also a public uh, forum tomorrow night at the East Ward, it's an East Ward community meeting. It's at the Union Baptist Church at 160 Oakwood Avenue. And the developers or the proposed developers of the Oakwood and Berwyn site Skyview um, will be there to answer questions and give a presentation. Um, with regard to uh, the hospital site, um, you have a resolution on this evening uh, to address um, the acquisition of a loan purchase and sale agreement um, and the foreclosure judgments with regard to that property. Um, we've previously approved a bond ordinance with regard to that property uh, or that transaction. Um, and uh, furthermore, I have provided uh, to the city clerk and to each member of the council a memorandum prepared by outside counsel, uh, which I've advised is covered by the attorney-client privilege and the attorney product work doctrine, um, as well as exempt from the Open Public Records Act by virtue of ongoing negotiations and potential litigation. Um, that memorandum sets forth the legal basis <coughs> and authority for the administration and the council to take the actions that are requested in Resolution 402 um, and also sets forth uh, a discussion of the risks. Okay. Right. Anyone else? Uh, council President, Councilman real quick. Johnson? Can they re Repeat uh, the East Ward meeting for me. Sure. The East Ward meeting <laughs> is on December 18th, tomorrow evening, from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. at Union Baptist Church, 160 Oakwood Avenue. Is it just for the Sky View? Uh, it's an East Ward community meeting, so I assume that there will be an open forum for questions and discussion but Skyview will be there to do a presentation. <coughs> okay, about okay. The, the project that we discussed at last council meeting. Right, um, can, but can somebody Berlin. stall them? Stall them to if they don't come on before six? I'll try. <laughs> 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 what time does it start? It starts at five, right? He starts at five. five to seven. They'll still be there <laughs> at six. You hmm? want us to stall them? It's just like, you. oh, okay. Yeah, I They'll still be there, be there at six. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> We'll okay. put we'll put parking on the agenda number one, and right. that should last yeah. until seven. Til next right. Day, yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, Council President, uh, I had a I had a brief conversation the other day because I couldn't make the uh, the library uh, uh, meeting last night, law under the weather, but I had a brief conversation with um, the board president, 
and I and I and I stress to him as opposed to me piecemeal on uh, some some meeting uh, notes and waiting for them to make their presentation at the annual budget hearing. Uh, why don't they come for matters of discussion and give us a, a recap of what they uh, achieved in 2019 uh, in their own words and where they plan on going into 2020. And he said he would discuss that with Sarah. And I offered out the two dates in January if it's up to you and the clerk's office to declare that he said he didn't think it would be a problem with Sarah. They would love to come and tell the city uh, what, they're, what they've been doing. That's up to you guys. So. So I'm going to reach out to Sarah Wiggins and, and uh, Dave McKnight to let them know that you guys give them the green light to be on matters of discussion. So I spoke with Mr. McKnight today, mm -hmm. um, and they should be prepared uh, either for the 7th or the second meeting in January. Um, and uh, we're also meeting between now and then to go over all of their budget items and the things that we've crossed off the list. Okay, Can we great. put them on for the second meeting in January? To Thank start you. the year out. Um, and I, I guess the postmaster decided she's not going to come. I'll talk <coughs> to you about it. Yeah, I'll talk to you about it. <coughs> you and I will talk about it, Council President. I see. Okay, Council <laughs> President. <laughs> One more question. Uh, I have another question under finance for Mr. Hartwick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we had a tight meeting, so um, can you just give any updates? Uh, you know how we're going to be uh, with the budget sure um, we've reviewed all accounts through November um, and as you'll see when we get to some of the walk-ons we're going to do some transfers mm -hmm. um, however um, we expect the performance to be uh, based on the review that we've done thus far um, comparable to last year um, we had a couple of unanticipated, or I should say, uh, under-anticipated expenses in healthcare driven primarily by one catastrophic claim. Um, and I've briefed the council on that claim. Um, so we'll be funding a portion of that, uh, assuming the council votes in favor for about $300,000 for an emergency. Um, those are not the types of claims that you can anticipate. Um, the claim involved multiple surgeries and an extended stay, both in a hospital and in a rehabilitation facility. Um, and that claim will continue as there will be future surgeries, uh, but everything that occurs uh, in 2020 will go against the 2020 uh, budget. So by and large, um, we had sufficient funds uh, appropriated to cover all expenses with the exception of um, the one or two emergencies uh, which are in the aggregate well below the 3% limitation. Anyone else? And just to update, um, as a result of a conversation with the mayor and our police director, the police will no longer be bringing a report before the council because of the volatile of the, what's happening in society and all the things that's happening in, in Orange right now. So we don't want to alert people to what we're doing and what the security issues are. So as a, in, in 2020, we will have one meeting a month where the police can come and have a community forum where they can update everybody as to what they're doing and what's happening, and it will not be televised. So as of now, they will no longer be presenting. And the fire department is, is in question. We haven't decided on that yet. So going forward, they will do it in a form just like we do the community meetings. That way the community can come out, ask any questions, get all the updates, but it will no longer be televised <coughs> for the security of our police and our officers. Move the agenda. No, we're not doing them tonight yet. Uh, for the record, City Attorney arrived at 837. Do you need theme music to walk in? <laughs> 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 you guys are playing music and chairs. <laughs> 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 like Until Grassi was supposed to bring us some Christmas cookies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you see how they did it? They got the young guy and then they got the middle aged. 
Okay. There are no communication and petitions. Pursuant to section 4-10 of the code of the city of Orange Township, each person addressing the council shall step up to the microphone, shall give his or her name and address in an audible tone for the record, and unless further time is granted by the presiding officer, shall limit his or her address to five minutes. The public is expected to conduct themselves in a proper manner. Any derogatory, abusive, or threatening statements will not be permitted. The chair will immediately rule such conduct out of order and terminate any further comments. Before we get started, Business Administrator Hartwick, you had some comments you wanted to make? So I, I wanted to let the council know of two um, very positive developments uh, from a financial standpoint. Um, we went to the rating agencies for our rating update, um, and S&P has removed the negative outlook and replaced it with a stable outlook, um, primarily on the um, reforms that have been introduced uh, by the administration and policies. Um, and secondly, after getting that rating, we went to a uh, rated public sale, competitive sale for notes, um, and the winning bid for the notes that we were selling is 1.44 percent, which is outstanding. Thank you. Mr. Jeffrey Fell? Um, good evening, my name is Jeffrey Feld, local businessman, attorney, and mortgagee whose local business address is 268 Main Street, Orange, New Jersey. Um, as my custom, since our last meeting on December 3rd, I've submitted four different memos um, on December 10th, December 11th, December 16th, and December 17th. I like my, a lot of my questions are incorporated in them. Um, as we begin, I first want to wish everyone Merry Christmas. Hanukkah, uh, which is important for my family, which was a rebellion against tyranny and Kwanzaa. I ask everyone to enjoy the holidays and, and may we all have a great next year. Um, I also want to publicly thank all the city employees who will be retiring at this end of this year for their services that they, they perform. Um, one thing that was not mentioned was an arbitration opinion that came out in December 6th of this year where retired presiding judge, appellate judge, Cuff, basically agreed with my analysis and our post-July 2016 FBI rate of City Hall BA's analysis. When you look at that opinion, the judge basically says, because we're talking about land tax credits and how a lot of our agreements did not have it, you violated the state constitution, you violated various taxpayers' constitutional rights. Um, as to some question that the BA just talked about, will the rating update be posted on the city's public website? And also, when we talk about the bond sales, um, which bond notes were we talking about? Were they the, the two for the water, the water utility and the capital improvements? And what was the total amount of them? Because I think we were talking about um, the two uh, qualified bonds that were approved. I just, I'd like that kind of clarification as to what we're doing. Um, as to the agenda, I want to talk, because we just heard you're going to be going to closed session to talk about the risk of approving the sale, the acquisition of the defaulted Orange Memorial Hospital uh, documents. As part of, I said before, my submissions to you, I've giving you public notices of ordinances that have been done in Newark regarding Reverter and Dover I gave you today that they approve acquisitions by ordinance. This is an issue. Um, also, when we acquired the Y, um, remember Frank Giantomasi came in and he said you had to do that by ordinance. When we acquired Rossi Paint location, and we acquired the Bank of America. We did it by ordinance. Why are we acquiring these, docu these documents by resolution? Um, when we look today, last time we postponed 
a resolution. Today, there's an amended resolution that we found out today um, that was put, you know, what are the differences between the documents? Why is there a different attorney approving the validity? In the document, they make a reference, and this is the risk that you're going to bear, is which controls the method of approval. Is it NJSA 40 colon 69A, yes, 36L, which is just a general provision that's in Title 40, or is it provisions in Title 40A? That's a legal issue that you really have to look at. Because when we talk about acquisitions in the land, local lands and buildings law, they specifically talk about distinctions when acquiring by ordinances. And I say, you look at what I gave you before, the public notices. This is the risk. And when you look at 4069A-36, you look at the acts that they say can be done by resolutions. And this is going to be part about statutory and constru uh, construction. Does a statute that was enacted 1950 control, or would a later statute, like in 1971, adopt which one would control? And look at the different acts that they can say you do by, by resolution. Is it a, and because the first sentence talks about legislative power, something that's discretionary. Remember, if you look at the broad reading of L, every time you do a long-term financial agreement, if you read this broadly, under the 40-69A-36, you would approve that by resolution. But we know that's a discretionary legislative act that because Judge Fuentes found that in a case involving Judge Kennedy when he was practicing, saying like long-term tax financial agreements had to be, this un that was under the common law, which eventually our legislature enacted, is saying that long-term tax exemption financial agreements have to be approved by ordinance. I will not be party to what goes on in your closed executive session, but when we talk about the risk, because we use the word risk, everyone needs to know what the risk is. And the risk is, is not the authority that you have, it's the method of approving this. Um, in doing this, unfortunately, there's a deadline, that being the, the 20th. Um, I thank you for removing a lot of the other items off of the um, docket, but as to the open matter, that's only the commission. Please, at some point, I'd like to meet with you and go into discussion, because a lot of times the OPRA problems are not the clerk's office. I've been saying this for years. It's been various departments, and what departments repetitively do not respond to the request of me and other people. Thank you. Again, everyone, have a great holiday. And I'll be speaking to, uh, about the walk-ons and the uh, ordinances later. Same to you, Mr. Bell. You too, Mr. Bell. Thank you. <coughs> Move to agenda. <coughs> Motion to close citizen comments. Move. Second. second. Motion by Councilwoman Williams, second by Councilman Johnson Jr. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Council comments? Council President. Councilwoman Jamie Summers Johnson. Okay. Well, uh, part of the South Ward um, where I live is in a blackout. Um, we had a huge tree drop on uh, Sterling Avenue and South Center. Uh, there was a police car parked there, but no police officer in it, but it hit the police car. So uh, they haven't even begun to cut down the tree. So we have a generator, so we're just hoping that it gets fixed quick because it's going to get cold. Um, I know there was some lines down on Haywood at the lower part by South Center, but I believe it's been restored. Uh, on December 4th, I had the honor of being the keynote speaker at the Rho Kappa National Social Studies Honor Society at Orange High School. And it was a, a really great time for me uh, because there were so many um, uh, African American and Hispanic women and men being honored um, with straight A's and social studies. So um, I really enjoyed myself with that. And then on December 5th, um, I had another successful South Ward meeting. Um, BA Chris gave updates on development and residents were able to um, answer questions, um, ask questions and get answers. Uh, the fire department gave us a different type of fire safety. Um, they even went into like what kind of batteries we should be using and where our fire um, extinguishers should be. So um, residents really enjoyed that. And a plus was having the tax department there uh, residents were able to ask questions like if they put additions on and what would count and what wouldn't. Um, I believe they enjoyed that. We also talked about some issues um, with dismissal at Haywood Avenue School and I know um, BA Chris is going to be meeting with the school system to try to 
figure out something because at dismissal it's like a really scary time um on Haywood Avenue right in front of the school and um I'm sad to say that uh my chef that um and when I say my chef I don't want to sound like oh I have a chef this was a mom and pop type um chef and he cooked for all of my events and he was extremely re reasonable he cooked for 10 years um, for anything that I was doing and the way that I met him was I had to leave my my newborn son in the hospital um, after having many surgeries and someone gifted him to me and I just knew I couldn't afford him because I was like a chef but he was so like forty dollars sixty dollars here and there but he was you know his his price of food did not match his service but unfortunately uh, we ordered food from him Saturday about four it was delivered about five and that evening he did an event in Morristown and had a heart attack and passed away so yeah so that like hit us hard Saturday um, so yeah he um, and what one thing that I learned though is he was under a lot of stress with you know the business and what it made me do honestly you know we all are trying to do a whole bunch of things the holidays are coming around you're trying to do a whole bunch of things it made me just stop and pause and know I can't do everything and um, if I learned anything he was a young guy too you know and if I learned anything from it it's you know just to all my council colleagues you know sometimes you get bombarded but we can't do everything and like um, assemblywoman said you can't please everyone um, you could get five phone calls that say you're doing a good job and you can get one that's saying you're doing a horrible job so you just kind of balance it out um, and just try to do the best that you can do so his name was chef Alton um, they have him down on the news as a famous celebrity chef I said okay <laughs> but to us he was just chef Alton um, I also attended uh, a Saturday parent workshop. Councilwoman um, Williams was there with me. The Orange Public Schools put it together. And what I loved about it was they had activities for the kids. A lot of times parents can't come to things because they don't want to bring the kids. But they had um, reading and things for them to do. Um, I want to um, tell residents this number. And I want them to write it down and call it as frequently as possible. It's the mayor's hotline. Um, I get a lot of calls from it. Um, the number is... 1-862-306-3313. I'm going to say it again. 1-862-306-3313. And that number is manned 24 hours a day. And what happens is I get pothole calls from there. I get, if it's something with the South Ward, um, the person that mans it is Stacy Martin. And she'll text me there's an issue or she'll call that department head and um, it really it really helps she had a, a senior call she couldn't get to pay her water bill and she actually was able to get to the senior and get the bill paid for her also um, I see we're still having crossing guard issues um, and they're very scary for me because it's the um, there was one on Scotland and Haywood and then Haywood and Berkeley um, and the police have been doing the best they can to try to help but it's just so scary because you see especially Scotland they don't know when to cross and the cars are not letting up. Mm -hmm. So um, hopefully more people will apply. Are we still at seven? Mm -hmm. We still need seven um, crossing guards, but it takes how long for them to be approved? Six weeks? Six weeks. Six weeks to pass the um, background, background check. check. Mm -hmm. So um, if you know anyone in need of a job, please let them go to the police department or CBA Chris, because our kids, we really need them to be protected. Thank you, Council President. Thank you. Councilman Williams. <laughs> Thank you, Council President. First, Mr. Hartwick, and I guess Council President, y'all attend the facilities meeting? Y'all both attend the facilities meeting? Yes. Okay. And uh, we had an incident on Park Avenue, and I understand it's not, it's an area of concern. Um, are we looking at that holistically th throughout the town? I don't know which incident you're referring to. Um, it was a car accident. Oh. The car oh. Yeah. <coughs> was the child hit? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's you are, <laughs> Chris. Do, are we looking at it collectively? Because I know it's not the first that, but it's an area. Yes. Okay. And I don't know if it's a traffic light issue or what we. It's a traffic should. engineering issue. Okay. All right. Can we? Um, we visited. We visited that before about putting a the traffic there. Mm -hmm. Like, and he came out and he put one at Park and Park Avenue, and then they put a flasher at North Center. Correct. And Park. We visited some years ago about, and that was all we could get out of the county. But maybe uh, we could go back and talk. Yeah. 
But there, it was it's a on the list along with the improvements on Central Avenue and over by the firehouse. We got to make sure the crossing guard is active there. Yes. Because I think there's a new one down there because the other one is sick. Mm -hmm. And just um, by way of announcement again, tomorrow from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. at Union Baptist <coughs> Church, 160 Oakwood Avenue, we'll have a community meeting to discuss development among other things. So please come out, be engaged, ask questions. And then on Friday the 20th from 9 a.m. to 11, we'll have our um, end of the year meeting with the businesses and that'll be at the Unitarian Church on Cleveland. And what are the hours? 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Okay. And I want to wish everybody a happy holiday and um, wish you a great time with your family and also I know that this time also brings um, not always uh, happy feelings because of love the lost ones so um, I guess that we are always mindful of who we're talking to and that we're paying attention and um, make sure we're listening to what people are saying and I also would like to offer my condolences to the Morrow and Brown family on the loss of their family member Sam Morrow thank you council president Councilman Williams, did we check the weather for tomorrow night? But this was very icy today. Oh, it's it, going to be cold. Tomorrow's so, Wednesday. Um, so we need to check the weather because. No, it's it, 30 tomorrow. No, it's not icy. It, it's going to be sunny tomorrow. It's not, it's continued right okay. yeah, It's just going to be cold. And I'm sorry, um, this weekend at the um, brewery, Four City, um, Four City Brewery, right by the train station. If anybody didn't know, we have a nice brewery in town where they make their brew right there. Thank you, Council. <laughs> Thank you, Councilwoman. I'm going to do it off the top of my head. We're also doing a pop-up shop there from December 19th to the 22nd. On the 19th and 20th, it begins at 4 p.m. And the 21st and 22nd, it begins at 12 noon. And the mayor is doing a kickoff on the 19th beginning at 5 p.m. And Thanks, explain to them what a pop-up shop is. A pop-up shop is when shops pop up. <laughs> no, <just kidding>. no. <laughs> no, <a pop> up. <laughs> no, when vendors come out, so uh, craft vendors, if you ever um, been to a place where you see people at tables selling their wares and things like that, and if you've been here long enough, we used to have one of the best vending places called Union Market here yeah. in this area. So it's a, it's a corner of Union Market right in there where you're going to have um, – craft vendors selling their wares um, and they're handmade generally and they'll be inside the brewery and also um, the brewery is craft beer that they make right there. While I'm not a beer person, they had some made out of chocolate beans, I think, or espresso beans, so they almost had me. But growing up here in Orange, I smell Rheingold all of my life, and the yeast from the Rheingold just turned me off from beer. But come by and check it out. It's really a nice spot. And Councilman Cooler, besides tasting the beer, you got to buy some. Absolutely, <laughs> Councilor. Oh, God. <laughs> Councilor <laughs> Root. <laughs> Hello, so I have a couple of things. I'll run through them um, very quick. On December the 10th, I would have the honor to attend Pride Academy Charter School in East Orange, where the charter schools, some children are in the city of Orange, they do participate and they do go to that school. They were celebrating Kwanzaa. It was a phenomenal um, event. We had um, dancing, we lit the canara, we had food. It was just a wonderful um, thing. There was a lot of people in attendance there. Um, on Saturday, we did a pop-up tenants' rights meeting. While out walking, we were in a particular building. There were a number of residents who had some questions about their rights and being tenants, so we did a pop-up tenants' rights um, meeting. Tomorrow, the 18th, is the annual Christmas party. I think it starts at 11. It's over at 1. The seniors. The seniors' mm -hmm. Christmas party. I'm sorry. We also had a grad graduation of the divert team. Um, that's domestic violence response team. Today, I think three people graduated from this. We need uh, seven more people. The classes will start again in the spring. I'll let you know when those classes start. So we're moving ahead with um, domestic violence and having people that can actually resp respond to people who have been victimized. And I just want to say, as Councilwoman Williams spoke about, um, this time of season is a joyous season. It is a great season for people, but 
you do need to be wary of people who are coping with grief. Mm -hmm. So I have four things that you need to do in dealing with grief during this time of season. Um, you need to acknowledge that the uh, holiday will be different and that it will be tough. Number two, you need to decide which um, traditions you want to keep. Number three, you need to decide which traditions you want to change. And number four, you um, can create a new tradition in memory of your loved one. So with that being said, I want to say happy holidays to you during these winter holidays. So no matter what you celebrate, it's a happy holidays to you, whether it is Christmas, whether it is it is Hanukkah, or whether it is um, Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa. Mm -hmm. Happy holidays from my family to yours. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Coley. I don't have a whole lot. Um, um, <laughs> Mr. Mays, can you give me an update on the, um, the salt? For the um, our, uh, snow season, how, how are we making out? Marty Mays, Director of Planning and DPW. Prior to the start of the year, we filled it up. Okay. Um, I think we have did about, so far this winter, a couple of little storms, nothing too heavy. We did about maybe 100 tons. And... We ordered 150, so we on full. Okay, so so we should be good. Okay, thank you, sir. We you always that. order salt after a storm, just to replenish. Yep, thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Uh, Mr. B.A., uh, I heard you guys talk about the budget. So how are we making up with the uh, budget worksheets from the different departments? All the departments have submitted their budget worksheets, with the exception of my department, um, administrative services, mm -hmm. and all of those uh, Departmental budgets have been entered into Edmonds. Okay. Thank you, so I have come to present. Thank you very much. Did you yell at yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I do that every day. <laughs> Councilman Jackson. Councilman Thank you, Jackson. Council President. Um, I, I, I wanted to mention um, how we try to find uh, a balance between development and maintaining the density and peace and quiet of our town. <laughs> Uh, I know that we have some big developments coming in and it, some that are likely to come as we have more property that is right for development. And just understand that uh, 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 the, the council is doing its best to make sure that we maintain the, the balance to ensure that Orange <coughs> remains uh, uh, the special place that it is. We're not trying uh, to be Hoboken and certainly uh, that would be in opposition to our master plan. Um, just remember that we're not just making this up as we go along. There are think adjustments that need to be made, but um, you know, we, we, under, we, don't, we want to increase rateables, we want to increase revenue, but we understand as well, we want to maintain uh, the peace and quiet of our town as much as possible and reduce uh, the explosion of density that has happened to other municipalities in, in New Jersey. Um, one of the things, it may, this may be uh, impossible, but something that we might consider is uh, as we have less areas of, that are ripe for development that we consider 15-year uh, pilots instead of 30-year pilots and other ways to make it a little more exclusive, um, just to think about it. Some good news, uh, as we look at academic achievement, we see the young people here who are champions. Um, we have also some people who do both athletics and academics. Uh, we have a young man that attends Rutgers named Willington Prevalon, and he is a defensive tackle in, at, for Rutgers. He's in his senior year. Uh, when he started at, at Rutgers, he, he's 6'5", so he's a big guy. He was about 100 and uh, well, he's about 225 pounds, maybe 225 pounds, 230 pounds, and now he is uh, 295 pounds, um, and he was recently uh, recognized as the most valuable defensive player uh, for his team, uh, someone who, for his first two years, he really didn't get in a game. This is the first season where he start all, started all the games, and he truly brought that tornado power to the field. Uh, and has been recognized by Rutgers as the most valuable defensive player. Uh, and, and as far as I, he, he's on schedule to graduate on time as far as I know. So uh, big 
shout out to Willington Prevalon and, and the Prevalon family uh, in Orange. Thanks for uh, representing Orange so well at our state university. Um, one other thing, the uh, planning and um, procedure committee, um, plan to see, what am I talking about? Policy and planning is the correct title of the committee. And uh, I, I've mentioned this to my colleagues and citizens that you need to know there is an opportunity to participate on the policy and planning committee. It is one of the standing committees of our council um, and it is charged with advising the municipal council concerning matters involving the establishment of a vision for the city and develop guidelines and policies to accomplish the goals. Uh, they will undertake periodic review of the city's master plan and make recommendations for updates to that document. So uh, as we think about how Orange will be moving into 2020 and beyond, uh, alignment with our new master plan uh, is very important and citizens do have an opportunity to participate along with the three members that are on the committee now, uh, Councilman Johnson Jr., Councilman Coley, and myself. Um, if you would like to participate on, those on that committee, um, please contact one of the other members who are, have appointing authority. That's uh, Councilwoman Wooten, Councilwoman Williams, uh, Council Vice President Williams, uh, Councilwoman uh, Jamie Summers Johnson, and also Council President Eason. Um, if you have any questions about participation on, participation on that committee or any other issue, you can reach me at 862-240-3634. That's 862-240-3634. If you prefer email, I'm at cjackson at orange.gov, uh, orangenj.gov, cjackson at orangenj.gov. Uh, please reach out to me and uh, let me know how things are going. Other than that, Council President, thank you, thank you very much. Councilman Johnson. Hey, Council President, Merry Christmas to you, Council President, to all my colleagues, Merry Christmas. This is our last meeting before Christmas, ain't it? Right. I want to wish all the residents of Orange, the administration, employees, Merry, Merry Christmas and Happy Holiday and especially to my neighbors in the West Ward. Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. Uh, just a quick recommendation to Councilman uh, Jackson, who's not a uh, social media buff. I would suggest that he put together some type of official flyer in his own words and, and allow us who are media buffs to share it on social media because there's a lot of people from Orange are waiting to hear from the information as opposed mm -hmm. to you sitting back waiting for it to be contacted. So you got to go out there and throw the net out. So you draft a, a flyer, and I'm quite sure your colleagues will definitely get the word out in the community uh, that will help buffer that up. But anyhow, it's the, it's the holiday. And, oh, uh, Councilwoman Wooten, thank you so much for uh, those kind words you just said today. Uh, they, were, they were very timely, just out of the blue. I mean, God is good. That's why we have to have two ears and one mouth so we can listen and hear things and receive things. Thank you, Council President. All right. Uh, first, I just want to say happy holidays to everyone. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year and be safe. Um, I also want to say that as we travel, please pay special attention. We have a lot of people walking the streets today. They're dotting out from cars, and they're all wearing black. Yes, sir. So you got to be careful as you travel through the city. Otherwise, you will run over somebody. And I want to, now residents, you know, they need to wear bright colors if they're going to walk at night so we can see them, and they're not crossing at the designated crosswalk, especially on Main Street. So let's all be careful, look out for one another. And I also want to put an appeal out to our citizens to help our police officers. When you see something happen in this city, Something shows up on your block or someone shows up on your block that you don't know, you've never seen, and they're just standing around the call the police department and have them investigate and make sure that you let people know. We take pictures of everything, but when my residents call me and say such as I say, did you take a picture? Everybody's always got their cell phone out taking pictures or videotaping. 
What is the license plate? Did you take? Oh, no, I forgot I had my cell phone. Oh, I didn't have. So we just got to be vigilant and look out for each other. Our police can't be everywhere, even though they're doing a good job today. Because early in the morning when I leave at five, it's what, 6, 6.30, they're out there with their lights flashing. and So they're trying to be vigilant and making sure that everybody's safe. But we got to help them, too, and be the eyes and ears of this city and make sure we keep our residents safe. And women, be careful when you walk the streets. Everybody should get one of those, what, body bags that sling over your shoulders. Stop. I see my seniors walking down the street swinging their pocketbooks. We've got to stop doing that, ladies. We've got to be vigilant and careful because in this world and this day, we've got to take care of each other and make sure that we do things to safeguard ourselves. And watch where you park. No dark areas. Watch where you're walking. And I got a, a social media text the other day. Don't park next to any vans in the shopping centers. Mm -hmm. So just be careful. Just be careful. Be careful. And let's just pray that we all stay safe and look out for one another. And for our council colleagues, we need more appointees to the Affirmative Action Committee. So we got to build that committee. So if you have anybody, Councilman Johnson, that's interested in being on the Affirmative Action See if we can get some people for the next uh, council meeting because we have some new residents. And I think sometimes when we see new people moving in, if we get to them first and ask them to be part of a committee, there'll be a more positive interest into the city of Orange. So we've got to reach out to their neighbors as they move into the neighborhood. And I say again, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Move the agenda. Council President. I'm yes, sorry, Council I forgot, uh, two things. Uh, and we forgot something. Can I just say it real quick? I just, uh, uh, the one thing we had, there was a big discussion on um, social media. Mr. Hartwick, I forgot to have you to say this about the permit, um, parking permits being uh, costing, come the new year, you'll have to pay $25. Yeah, I don't know I, where the. I just want to say, no council colleagues, y'all, did y'all anticipate um, presenting legislation like that? No. Okay. No. I, okay. I don't. I'm like, no. <laughs> I don't know where the rumor came from. Um, but we haven't had any discussions internally in administration regarding fees. Mm -hmm. As you all know, we've been studying parking, assessing our infrastructure, um, looking at our parking regulations in a much more holistic approach than responding to petitions. Um, and uh, we're very focused on. Uh, commuter parking and making sure that we have enough, but making sure that it doesn't bleed over into shopper parking or clog residential streets and take up residential parking. So it's a comprehensive approach, but we haven't discussed any fees. The thing that we've been most focused on for the last couple of months is whether or not we can transition to license plate enforcement um, of our parking regulations, um, but no discussion on charging for permits or fees. And last, the house on Hickory, is that going to make it, is it going to be demolished by the 31st? Marty? That depends on a couple of things still waiting for. The main thing is the public service shutoff, still waiting for that. Um, the property was abated. Um, so we're we waiting to see. I and can't the structural engineer went out. Structural engineer went out, gave me a letter uh, talking about the integrity. One of the things that I'll be quick, one of the things that happened is, believe it or not, after all this time, um, the owner is saying that he may want to see the property, which is not going to happen. So I'm taking steps now to battle him. So there's a couple of things at play right now. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, as soon as we get this public service letter, we're going to knock it down. And what's the address again? I'm sorry. 186 Hickory. And hey, Marty, why are you doing real quick? As long as that property has been abandoned, I, I thought that you said before, some time ago, that PSC, PSC and G had disconnected the service. PSC disconnects service letter comes when you make a motion for demolition, which I did as soon as the property caught on fire. So the I'm first time, 
No, the second time. There's a difference between the service shutoff, which was done the first time, and the disconnection. Right. Disconnections, it has to be done differently than the shutoff. The shutoff just shuts off the house. The disconnection disconnects at the curb line. As soon as I get the proper documents, so I don't have a lawsuit, which I never had in demolition, I'm gonna knock it down. All right, so we're not getting our Christmas present. <laughs> <laughs> you may, you may, you may. You That's may. why I didn't bring it up, because I thought that I was getting my um, when I left, Christmas present. Right, when I left here the last time, I was happy, because the owner said, basically, he understood, he was gonna move in the right direction, came to me and said, you know what? I may try to save it, mix without going into a lot of detail. And he does. has that right to do that, but you're gonna try to get a letter now to save it when we gave you over a year to get that letter. So now he wants to Which do. you shouldn't have done, because I told you that. Listen, I'm doing the best I can but with that. Thank you, Mr. Mason. Thank right. you, sir. Hey, Council President. Cal yeah. Yes, Cal Cal Councilman Just. Yeah, I just got a hype. Director Mays, I, I don't know if you can answer this or not, but it's an incident, incident that we just going through with this this guy, the property owner. Does, does that does that have an adverse effect on everybody else's yes. rating on their house? Yes. 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 yes, yes, it does. Yes. To have somebody that's in and out of owning property and nobody ever lives there, but he's got to have some insurance on it, correct? This and guy. then it catches on fire, and it's a 07050 zip code. <clears throat> I'm gonna get it down. We gotta, we gotta squash that stuff, man. Everybody, everybody gets hurt behind I, it. I'm, I agree with you. Thank you. <coughs> and Director Mays, real quickly. <laughs> the stop signs for our crossing guards are they in yet? No. Are they ordered? They were ordered. And I changed the order to the blinking lights. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Council um, President. Merry <laughs> Christmas, <laughs> buddy. I forgot one other thing. We also want to thank our police, our mayor and police department for the successful toy giveaway last night. I mean, the people really came out to get the toys. It was a crowded event, but very successful. And we want to thank our partners at Pickerton and Arsenal, the Marines, mm -hmm. for donating the toys. Mm -hmm. I mean, they had so many toys there. There's no reason anybody should not be blessed for Christmas. And I think there's another toy giveaway. Uh, Thursday. Thursday, Thursday night. Yeah. And where is that at? Um, Thursdays is at, at, the at the Elks Club, right? Mm -hmm. At the Elks. Mm -hmm. So we want to thank the police. They did a fine job decorating. They did a fine job playing Santa Claus. So thank you so much Inviting for Santa your support of the community. <laughs> Inviting Santa Claus. <laughs> huh? Inviting, Inviting Santa Claus. Council. Council. Inviting Santa Claus. Council President, <laughs> this is just really quick. It might be to Director Mays or it might be to um, <laughs> B.A. Chris. Um, on Oakwood Avenue, there's some construction going on on the corner of Oakwood and Berwyn. And on a container, it has a sign that says asbestos. Mm -hmm. um, and we have children that walk down Oakwood Avenue to Oakwood Avenue School. So a parent called. She was concerned that are we properly handling the asbestos the way that we should. There were people on the roof. They had on the um, Tyvek suits. They had on the mask. But as they were picking up the shingles on the roof and throwing it into the dumpster, the children don't have on tie vent suits or masks. So I just want to know, are we taking care of that the way that we're supposed to? Are we handling it in a safe manner or the safest way that we can for those residents who are going to Oakwood Avenue School who are walking? We'll be out there tomorrow to check. Okay. All right, move the agenda. <coughs> Ordinance on second reading. Wait, she wasn't finished. Oh, I'm sorry. Finish. Okay, okay. I, and this is really quick. A longtime resident on um, Hampton Terrace, we received a text today that he has passed. So, um, Councilman Coley has been on the block longer than I have, and he's known this gentleman longer than I have. But we did receive notice that um, Mr. Coleman passed uh, maybe earlier today. So, sending yes, out that, yeah, condolences present. to him and his. No, Retired family. school teacher. Right. Yeah, Mr. Orange. Mr. Coleman's Mr. Orange. And he used to be a math tutor. 
-hmm. at the middle school in East Orange when he retired. That was his second career. So. Boy well, Scout Master, I believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Many years. Mm -hmm. Are we right, good. <laughs> clear? Yes. All minds and hearts <laughs> are clear? Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> Ordinance on second there. reading, public hearing. 56-2019, an ordinance amending Chapter 26, Police Department of the City Code of the City of Orange Township to add a new Article 3, establishing a canine policy for the City of Orange Township Police Department. Any citizens wish to speak? Motion to close citizens' comments. Second. Councilman Williams and Councilman Johnson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion to adopt on final. Move. Second. Councilwoman Council Coley. Council Coley and Councilman Jackson. Mm -hmm. On the motion? Council President? Yes, Councilwoman Williams. As we adopt this, as we move forward adopting this, um, I know I just read at one point that the county was seeking to rescind theirs, but after um, a community cry out that we needed to, they wanted the county to continue with their canine. So I think we're moving in the right direction by doing this. So the county will be continuing their canine. And I think this is the right direction for us to move forward in as well. Roll call. Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Yes. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Eason? Yes. 57 2019. An ordinance of the City of Orange Township adopting the Lincoln Avenue, 595 Lincoln Avenue Redevelopment and Rehabilitation Plan pursuant to NJSA 40A colon 12A dash 7E. Any citizens wish to speak? Um, again, my name is Jeffrey Phil. I gave you my information about my addressing. Um, I'm just questioning how can we adopt a plan that's already been adopted? Um, I say that because Oprah is a wonderful tool that through Oprah, you know, um, I've re obtained copies of the resolution, the ordinance that was adopted in May of 2011, adopting the plan. On this past August, you designated a redeveloper for the property. And the only way you could designate the redeveloper if there was a plan. Mm -hmm. Now, if there is no plan, then what are we, how are we selling the property that we're trying to do. Um, in addition, through Oprah, I got a copy of what the, the planning board approved in September. And it has adopted, even though it has the wrong date, it said adopted April 5th, 2011, even though it was May of 2011. But I think on 57, it's factually false. You're not adopting a plan. A plan has been adopted already. I think the real correct one is 60, that you're amending an adopted plan, and I would suggest that you vote down 57 2009 and start commencing an investigation of how this ever got on the, the um, agenda in the first place with the, the, the words adopting, because it wasn't a, because it's already been in effect. If someone had done their due diligence through Oprah and had a record, you would have see the historical procedural posture of this, uh, this this thing, and that came up last night also at the planning board regarding a different plan. Uh, Minister Wilson? Um, Minister Administrator, I'll let you respond then after Murphy Wilson speaks. Murphy Wilson, 362 Haywood. Um, I've already voiced uh, some concerns about this uh, in terms of the density and congestion and so forth. Uh, but more specifically, my question is, how can you do an adoption on second reading and right below it, you're doing an amendment on first reading? I, I'm, I, just, I just don't understand. So maybe somebody can explain that because it appears to be the same thing. If you're doing a first reading, then you don't need the one on second reading. If you're doing the one on second reading, why are you doing the one on first reading? I'm just confused. That's all. Hey, Mr. Administrator Hartwick. There's um, absolutely nothing procedurally wrong with adopting a redevelopment plan on a property that already has a redevelopment plan. It's you're just changing the plan, um, and 
It doesn't have to be an amendment, but it can be an amendment. Um, and it's really, you know, form over substance. If we call it adopting a plan and it's adopting an amendment, I frankly don't think that any court of competent jurisdiction is going to object to that. Well, I could let an attorney say it, but I'm comfortable saying it myself. Motion to close citizen comment. Move. Motion by Councilwoman Wheeler, second by Councilwoman Summers. No, I say that was <laughs> you were laughing. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? I have to laugh. Motion to adopt on final. Move. Move. Councilwoman Williams and Councilman Coley. Hey. On the motion, Council President. Yes, Council Reed. A little um, through you to Mr. Hartwick. Um, you kind of summarized your answer right there, but um, can you just be a little bit more specific in reference to Mr. Fell? Um, the May, August, and September submissions that he just mentioned, and then um, to Ms. Wilson's um, that we're going to be doing a subsequent ordinance following. I'm sorry. What? Can you just be more specific? You gave a general answer. So yeah. basically you're saying that this is a new plan. I'm saying that we're changing things in the plan. Mm -hmm. And we can do that at any time mm -hmm. as long as we follow the process under the, under the statute. Okay. The things that we're changing with regard to 595 include but is not limited to density mm -hmm. and setbacks mm -hmm. and coverage. And then the ordinance that follows this is is a further amendment of the same plan. Okay. Thank you, Council President. But um, based on the planning board last night, anything that was approved, adopted, or what it was, he said, 2011, we agreed it expires after 120 days if they do nothing. So really, that should have died in 2011. I'm not going to render an opinion on that. No, I wasn't at the saying, planning board what, meeting. That's what we agreed on last night. Something to that effect. After 120 days, they have to. Anyway. Roll call. Councilman Coley? <laughs> yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Yes. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Easton? Yes. Ordinance on introduction, first reading, 60-2019, an ordinance of the City of Orange Township amending the Lincoln Avenue, 595 Lincoln Avenue Redevelopment and Rehabilitation Plan pursuant to NJSA 40A, colon 12A-7E. Was there a motion to adopt Move. on first? Councilwoman Williams? Second. And Councilman Jackson? On the motion? Seeing on roll call, Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson, Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Yes. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Eason? Yes. 61-2019, an ordinance to amend the code of the City of Orange Township, Chapter 200, entitled Vehicles and Traffic, Section 200-52-1, Handicapped Parking Spaces, 208 Snyder Avenue. A motion to adopt on first. Move. Second. Councilman Williams and Councilman Jack Johnson. On the motion. On the motion, uh, Madam Clerk, that should be Snyder Street. You read into the record. You, you read. Wait, Snyder Street. Yeah, you read. Uh, Avenue. Snyder Avenue. It should be Snyder oh, Street. Oh, Snyder Street. Yes. Thank you. <coughs> Roll call, Councilman Coley. Yes. Councilman Jackson. Yes. Councilman Johnson Jr. Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson. Yes. Councilwoman Williams. Yes. Councilwoman Wooten. Yes. Council President Easton. Yes. 62-2019, an ordinance to amend the code of the City of Orange Township, Chapter 200, entitled Vehicles and Traffic, Section 200-52-1, Handicapped Parking Spaces, 264 Snyder Street. Is there a motion to adopt on first? Move. Second. Motion by Councilwoman Williams, second by Councilman Johnson, Jr. On, on the motion? Yeah, I have it on the motion. Is there any point where on any given street that you can have, do Too we have many? A, how many handicapped parking can be on any given street? Is there a limit? I don't, I don't know the answer to the question. I'd have to do some research. I think we need to look at that. 
because a event because subsequently a whole street could be just handicapped parking. So we need to figure out what we're doing with that. Well, Council okay. President, I believe as per our, our ordinance, there's 300 feet um, distance between one handicapped spot and another. I don't know. We discussed it in the finance meeting briefly. But I... Yeah. But because uh, I think well, we can pass Councilwoman Wooten asked the question. We so we passed legislation that the X amount of handicapped people can only live on the same street. a handicap ward. Yeah, how, how you going how you going to deny? Uh, no, the, I'm just the saying we got But I think we need to that's we need to look spot. at that because eventually some residents are going to start complaining. Well, that's, yeah, yeah, I, we'll see. I, I believe, Ken, on Council President, that's why, they, um, <laughs> in the spirit of our ordinance, that's why the 300 feet within uh, one handicapped spot to another um, was put in place. I think that was prior to me getting, getting on the council, but I, I, I assume that was the spirit uh, whenever that ordinance was um, put in place years ago. Yeah, well, do we want to uh, look at that? I said I'll research it. Okay, and we'll look at it for the next meeting just so that we're all clear on that. And Council President, I just want to say that um, um, right now uh, we are all um, in our right minds and healthy and things like that, but at the snap of a finger, anything um, you know, could change, you know, our lifestyle. And, um, um, and I would hate um, for someone on this governing body to one day um, apply for one of these um, spots in front of the house and can't get it but but also you need to look at the other spectrum we have other residents on the block also that's living there that's entitled to have parking so I think we just have to figure out where is their balance to the whole thing yeah we yeah. got to figure out what where, where the in, the medium is because if we have every every spot handicapped and I live on that block where am I gonna park I'm just saying we just need to think about and look at it not saying we're going to deny anybody anything, but we just make sure that what we're doing is right for the community and that we're looking at everything so that we balance it out. Yep. Roll call. Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson, Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Yes. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Eason? Yes. The final reading for the above ordinance is Tuesday, January 21st, 2020. Consent agenda. All items listed with an asterisk are considered to be routine by the City Council and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless the Council member so requests, in which event the items will be removed from the general order of business and considered in its normal sequence on the agenda. Um, Point of order. Mm -hmm. Um, we're going to take off 413 through 418 for separate no, no, no. vote. I thought 413 and 418 was already pulled. No, they're going to be returned to the administration, but they, they need to be returned with the motion and a second and a roll call vote. Okay. Okay. I'm a little confused. So we're, we're not voting for passage, we're voting to... To return it to administration. To administration. Okay. Yes. Return to administration. Okay. 14 right. through 418. Four, 14 is going to be postponed to the next meeting, but we're going to postpone <coughs> it by a roll call vote. Okay. All right. Um, 402, uh, we're going to take it off and then do a point of order. I believe it's that one. Okay. To vote on it after executive session. Okay. 426 is going to be returned to administration. Are there any other items? And 427 items? is amended as well, right? The, the amendment is just the change from January 1st to January 12th. It's a minor change. Okay. And I think you have the amended one on your uh, mm. no. on your table. No. Are there any other items? Okay. 
The consent agenda consists of 407, 408, 409, 410, 411, 412, 419, 420, 421, 422, 423, 424, 425, and 427. Is there a motion to adopt the consent agenda? Move. Councilman Coley. Second. Councilman Williams. On the motion. Seeing a roll call, Councilman Coley. Yes. Councilman Jackson. Yes. Councilman Johnson, Jr. Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson. Yes. Councilwoman Williams. Yes. Councilwoman Wooten. Yes. Council President Eason. Yes. 400-2019 um, is tabled and is recommended to remain tabled, so I'll read the title. A resolution granting developer designation for Skyview Capital LLC and or its affiliate B&O Urban <coughs> Renewal Entity as a developer within the Transit Village District East portion of the Central Orange Redevelopment Area. Is there a motion to lift off the table? Seeing none, it remains tabled. Four thirteen twenty nineteen, a resolution authorizing agreement with Foley Incorporated, located at eight fifty five Centennial Avenue, Piscataway, New Jersey, zero eight eight five five, for preventive maintenance service to to the generator located at the Freddie Pole Hill Law and Justice Complex, twenty five dash twenty nine Park Street, Orange, New Jersey, zero seven zero five zero, commencing January first, twenty twenty through December thirty first, twenty twenty, an amount not to exceed. $13,903.36. Is there a motion to return to administration? Moved. Councilwoman Williams Second. and Councilman Jackson. On the motion, seeing on roll call. Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson Jr.? Abstain. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Yes. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. And Council President Eason. Yes. That's six yeas and one abstain. Legislation be returned to administration. 414-2019, a resolution authorizing a list of law firms to represent the city of Orange Township in regard to labor matters on an ad lead basis for a period of one year from January 1st, 2020 through December 31st, 2020. Is there a motion to postpone to the next council meeting? Move. Councilman Williams. Second. Councilman Jackson. On the motion? On the motion, is postponed or returning to administration order at the it's same time? It's being thing? postponed. Okay, postponed. Sorry. Roll call. Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Yes. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President, I mean, here, Council President Eason? Yes. 415-2019, a resolution authorizing a list of law firms to represent the city of Orange Township in regards to litigation matters on an ad needs basis for a period of one year from January 1st, 2020 through December 31st, 2020. Is there a motion to postpone? Move. Councilman Williams and Councilman Jackson. On the motion. Seeing on roll call, Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson, Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Yes. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Eason. Yes. 416-2019, a resolution authorizing a list of law firms to represent the city of Orange Township in regards to workers' compensation matters on an ad needs basis for a period of one year from January 1st, 2020 through December 31st, 2020. A motion to postpone? Move. Councilwoman Williams. Second. And Councilwoman Wooten. On the motion, seeing on roll call, Councilman Coley. Yes. Councilman Jackson. Yes. Councilman Johnson, Jr. Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Yes. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Eason? Yes. 417 2019, a resolution authorizing a list of firms to represent the city of Orange Township in regards to redevelopment matters on an ad needs basis for a period of one year from January 1st, 2020 through December 31st, 2020. A motion to postpone. Move. Councilwoman Williams and Councilwoman Wooten. On the motion. Seeing a roll call, Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson, Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Yes. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Eason? Yes. 418-2019, a resolution authorizing a list of firms to represent the city of Orange Township in regards to tax appeal matters on an ad needs <coughs> basis for a period of one year from January 1st, 2020 through December 31st, 
2020. Is there a motion to postpone? Move. Councilman Williams. Second. Councilman Wooten. On the motion, seeing on roll call, Councilman Coley. Yes. Councilman Jackson. Yes. Councilman Johnson, Jr. Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson. Yes. Councilwoman Williams. Yes. Councilwoman Wooten. Yes. Council President Eason. Yes. 46-2019, a resolution approving a loan purchase and sale agreement between the city and AHAF Investment LLC in connection with the city's acquisition of block 3601 lots 1, 2, 33 through 38 and block 3702 lot 4, commonly known as the Orange Memorial Hospital site, authorizing the mayor to execute the loan purchase and sale agreement on behalf of the city for the purchase of a foreclosed loan and mortgage pertaining to such property and authorizing a business administrator to take certain actions in connection with any sheriff cells relating thereto. Is there a motion to return to the administration? Move. Second. Councilwoman Williams and Councilwoman Wooten. On the motion. Roll call, Councilman Coley. Yes. Councilman Jackson. Yes. Councilman Johnson, Jr. Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson. Yes. Councilwoman Williams. Yes. Councilwoman Wooten. Yes. Council President Eason. Yes. New business. The following resolutions are being considered tonight to be walked onto the agenda. Because there is a voluminous amount of resolutions, I'm just going to read the number of the resolutions and then during, if once they're walked on, I'll read the titles. Is that acceptable? Yes. yes. <laughs> Overwhelmingly, right? Um, 428-428-2019-WL, 429-2019-WL, 430-2019-WL, 431-2019-WL, 432-2019-WL, 433-2019-WL, 434-2019-WL, 435-2019-WL, 436-2019-WL, 437-2019-WL, and 438-WL. 2019 WO and 439 2019 WO. Is there a motion to walk these items onto the agenda? Move. Councilman Second. We is in Councilman Jackson. On the motion. Seeing on roll call, Councilman Coley. Yes. Councilman Jackson. Yes. Councilman Johnson Jr. Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Yes. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Eason? Yes. Are there any citizens who wish to discuss any items that was just walked onto the agenda? Yes. Um, Mr. Feld, uh, you have my address. Um, various ones that go to the, the way I understand the appropriations that there's a 60-day window uh, as to them. I think we should have a little more discussion of 432-2019. That takes about the effective date of the ordinance that will be considered for second rating in January. Uh, you're making a finding today of an emergency, and I think that should be explained in the record what the emergency is that requires you to do that. Um, as to there's various re walk-on resolutions as to ratifying contracts that people have been um, performing for for the year. The question is, why at this last date are we finally, if we, one question goes, have we paid on these contracts as the year went on? If we had paid on it, why didn't you, like a circuit breaker go on that there was no underlying contract at that time if we were paying them? Those are some concerns I have just based on quick per perusal of these uh, walk-ons. The key is, you know, at the last <coughs> meeting, you're ratifying contracts that people have been performing for the year, but also the most important one is, as to the emergency, the factual, you need to create a factual uh, record for that. Are there any other citizens? Motion to close citizens' comments. Second. Councilwoman Williams and Councilwoman Wooten. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? 48-2019-WO, a resolution to cancel 2019 current fund budget appropriation balances. 2019? 428-2019-WO, a resolution to cancel 2019 current fund budget appropriation balances. Is there a motion to adopt? Move. Councilwoman <coughs> Williams. Second. Second. 
second by Councilman Jackson. On the motion? On the motion. Council President, through you to Mr. Hartwood. Mr. Hartwood, why are we walking this on and now? And what is um, a brief summary? Sure. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, an appropriation we made uh, as part of the 2019 budget um, for capital uh, improvements. Um, and as we moved through the year or the budget year, it became uh, apparent that we were going to do um, some capital bond ordinances. So we're canceling this appropriation at this time because it's not needed. Um, it'll be canceled to surplus. I did review this both at the time that we put it in the budget um, and today, uh, actually in preparation for today, with the budget consultant, um, and he's in agreement with the cancellation. Point of order. Roll call. Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Yes. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Eason? Yes. All right. I'm going to have, um, because we had so many walkers, have Mr. Hartwood go through the reason why you're doing this now. Sure. So that we don't have to do that each individual time. So I'll just do each resolution. Yeah, just explain so, uh, to the public the, why you. The majority of these are financial transactions uh, occasioned by uh, the year end. And what we do is we examine the accounts once we have completed the bank reconciliations for November. We compare those accounts to the budget. We estimate the amount of money that we will need to get through the end of the year. We see where we're short. Um, we see where we have over-appropriated, and we transfer monies to keep the budget balanced. So if you look at 429, which is a resolution for the transfer of appropriations, we're taking approximately $365,000 from the fire department salary and wages that is inside the cap waiver, and we're moving it to police department salary and wages inside the cap waiver um, to fund overruns in the police salary and wage line, but we budgeted for public safety, so we had the 365 there. In 430, this is also a resolution for the transfer of appropriations. This has more accounts identified. Um, these accounts um, are not inside of CAP, so um, they, uh, in other words, they're not cap waiver accounts. Um, there's a salary adjustment. We're taking money from that account. We're taking money from Administrative Services O&E, from the Tax Assessors O&E, from the Crossing Guards O&E, from the Street Maintenance O&E, from Maintenance of Parks O&E, Equipment Vehicle Maintenance O&E, Municipal Court, General Liability Insurance, and Street Lighting and Refuse Removal. And we are transferring those funds which totals $750,000 to the following accounts. To the Mayor's Office Salary and Wage, to the Business Administrator's Office Salary and Wage, to the City Clerk Salary and Wage, to the Planning Division Salary and Wage, to the Tax Collection Department Salary and Wage, to the Police Department Salary and Wage, to Street Maintenance Salary and Wage, to Public Work Director's Office Salary and Wage, to Finance Operating Expenses, to the tax collection operating expenses, to the workers' compensation operating expense, and to employee group health and telephone. So the vast majority, more than 50 percent or approximately 50 percent of the funds, um, well, let's just call out the numbers. There's $355,000 going to the employee group health, and there is $207,000 going to street maintenance, salary, and wage. Um, the 207000 to street maintenance, salary, and wage uh, picks up the storms from the beginning of the year and the overtime that we've expended. And the 355000 for the employee group health is occasioned by a catastrophic claim that I had previously advised the board of um, 
that employee's had undergone a extensive stay in the hospital and a rehabilitation facility and uh, multiple surgeries. Resolution 431 is a resolution uh, to authorize an emergency appropriation in the amount of $300,000 for the same uh, employee health benefits line to cover the catastrophic claim. Um, this will get us through the year and we'll budget in 2020 now with knowledge of the catastrophic claim and the continued treatment that will be necessary. 432 is a resolution declaring that an emergency exists with regard to Ordinance 59-2019, which is an ordinance that you'll have up for public hearing and final adoption on January 7th. Um, and this resolution basically says that you waive the estoppel period based on an emergency. The emergency is that we under budget it um, in the, or I should say we over anticipated a revenue based upon a special tax sale. It was the first tax sale of its kind in the state of New Jersey. It was a special tax sale for subsequent unpaid taxes related to a bulk lien sale. Um, it did not realize the revenue that um, we had anticipated in the budget. So we have accelerated um, this transaction so that if there's uh, any shortfall in the budget, it'll be covered by unanticipated miscellaneous revenue. And we would like to waive the estoppel period so that the ordinance takes effect immediately upon adoption. And you have a closing date as well, right? I have a closing date, yes. Uh, Ordinance 433, 2019 is a resolution ratifying a contract with Let's Think Wireless. Um, this is a maintenance agreement and support for surveillance cameras. Um, as you can see, it's a ratification that goes back to the beginning of the year. Although budgeted for, the department did not put forth the appropriate resolution and contracts for approval. Um, we caught that in our review. Uh, over the last several months, and this is a correction. 434. But I'm sorry, before you, because you asked, what, were any um, monies expended on this? Um, I don't have the answer to that. I know that on one of the other ones, which I think is 439, we did expend money up to April and then stopped okay. because we realized that there was an issue. Um, I can check to see whether these um, maintenance contracts actually had expenditures. Mm -hmm. I, I think they did, especially LTW, because I remember <coughs> being on the bill list. Okay. Uh, 434 is from the same department. Um, it's the enforces police systems. It's the support and maintenance of the software for police dispatch mapping and records management. Um, similarly, um, <laughs> this was budgeted for. Um, but the department did not put forth the appropriate contract. We caught that in our review as well, so we're asking the council to ratify um, the and, same and way. And same thing, you, do you know if monies were spent? That one I don't. I know okay. LTW was, I'm not sure about enforcers, I have to check. Do you know, okay. Mr. Matt? No, all right. Um, 435 is a resolution authorizing approval to amend the calendar year 2019 municipal budget by inserting items of revenue and appropriations totaling $371,500 in additional grant funding that was not included in the original budget. These are grant awards that came throughout the, the year um, and this is what's called the Chapter 159 Appropriation Resolution so that we can recognize the revenue in the current year's budget. Number 436 is a resolution authorizing an extension of the agreement with Unitemp, uh, 26 World's Fair Drive, Unit D, in Somerset, New Jersey, for the maintenance and repairs of the HVAC system at the Freddie Paul Hill Law and Justice Complex to an additional 60-day period, commencing January 1, 2020, through February 28, 2020, in an amount not to exceed $6,000. During that 60-day period, we'll prepare bid specs um, for the new contract. Um, I don't like to be in the winter um, and not have a contractor to be able to call um, as it relates to the HVAC system <coughs> at the police and municipal court building. 
437 is a resolution authorizing the city to submit certain project applications received from the Orange community for inclusion within the County of Essex Community Development Block Grant application for the year 2020. Um, the uh, delay in connection with this application was gathering all of the appropriate backup. Um, it could have been on the last agenda, but we didn't have the backup. So now that the package is complete, we've put it forward as a walk-on. And finally, almost, <laughs> 438 is the resolution supporting uh, Bill A5012, requiring public school districts to provide instruction on the dangers of electronic cigarette usage as part of the New Jersey Student Learning Standards in the Comprehensive Health and Physical Education. This is the resolution that you heard about so eloquently from the students in Dr. Matarese's class. And finally, 439 is a resolution authorizing and ratifying a contract with Millennium Consultants. They are our grant consultant. There was money expended under this um, until April. Um, and uh, we dropped the ball on this and did not get the contract executed. Uh, we'd stopped paying them. They didn't stop working. So I've put forth this resolution ratifying with the executed contract attached. So and we have the funds in the budget to pay for um, these services. So we, we did a resolution for them. You're saying that we didn't. We did not do a resolution in 2019. We did one in 2018. Mm -hmm. I was under the impression that it had been done in January. Mm -hmm. It was not. It went upstairs and then got sent back for a reason and never went back up. Okay. That's all I have. 429-2019 W.O., a resolution for the transfer of appropriations. Is there a motion? Move. Second. Motion by Councilman Coley, second by Councilwoman Williams. On the motion? Seeing a roll call, Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson, Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Yes. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Eason? Yes. 430-2019 W.O. Resolution for transfer of appropriation. Motion to adopt. Move. Second. Council Williams and Councilman Coley. On the motion. Seeing on roll call, Councilman Coley. Yes. Councilman Jackson. Yes. Councilman Johnson, Jr. Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson. Yes. Councilwoman Williams. Yes. Councilwoman Wooten. Yes. Council President Easton. Yes. 431-2019 W.O. Resolution of the City of Orange Township authorizing emergency appropriation pursuant to NJSA 40A colon 4-46 for employee health benefit costs incurred by the city and authorizing issuance of emergency notes pursuant to NJSA 40A colon 4-51. See a motion to adopt? Move. Councilman Second. Williams. Second. And Councilman Jackson. On the motion, seeing none, roll call Councilman Coley. Yes. Councilman Jackson. Yes. Councilman Johnson, Jr. Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson. Yes. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Eason? Yes. 432-2019 W.O. Resolution declaring that an emergency exists and Ordinance 59-2019 W.O. shall take effect immediately upon approval by the mayor pursuant to NJSA 40-69A-181B. Motion to adopt? Move. Councilwoman Second. Williams? Second. And Councilwoman Wooten? On the motion? Seeing a roll call, Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson, Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Yes. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Easton? Yes. 43 2019 W.O. A resolution authorizing and ratifying a contract with Let's Think Wireless LLC, AKA LTW, located at 26 Chapin Road, Suite 112, P.O. Box 28, Pine Brook, New Jersey, 07058 for the maintenance and support of the surveillance cameras commencing January 1st, 2019 through December 31st, 2019 in amount not to exceed $26,974. Motion to adopt. Move. Councilwoman Williams. Councilwoman Wooten. On the motion. Seeing a roll call, Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson, Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Yes. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Eason? Yes. 43-4-2019 W.O. A resolution ratifying and authorizing a contract service with Enforce 
Police Systems, Inc., located at 27 Bleecker Street, Milburn, New Jersey, 07041, to provide support and maintenance of the software for the police dispatch, mapping, and records management for the Orange Police Department for a period of August 1st, 2019, until July 31st, 2020, an amount not to exceed $29,000. Motion to adopt. Move. Councilwoman Williams. Second. Councilwoman Williams. On the motion. Seeing a roll call, Councilman Coley. Yes. Councilman Jackson. Yes. Councilman Johnson Jr. Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson. Yes. Councilwoman Williams. Yes. Councilwoman Wooten. Yes. Council President Eason. Yes. 435-2019 WO. Resolution authorizing approval to amend the CY 2019 municipal budget by inserting items of revenue and appropriations totaling $371,500 in amount in additional grant funding. Motion to adopt. Move. Councilman Williams. Second. Councilman Wheaton. On the motion, seeing on roll call, Councilman Coley. Yes. Councilman Jackson. Yes. Councilman Johnson Jr. Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson. Yes. Councilwoman Williams. Yes. Councilwoman Wooten. Yes. Council President Eason. Yes. 436-2019-WO, a resolution authorizing an emergency agreement for the extension of maintenance and repairs to the HVAC at Freddie Pole Hill Law and Justice Complex to Unitemp. 26 World's Fair Drive, Unit D, Somerset, New Jersey, 08873, up to an additional 60-day period commencing January 1st, 2020 through February 28th, 2020, an amount not to exceed $6,000. Motion to adopt. Council President, just before, I just want to, if this is not an emergency, because you said emergency in the beginning, this is just an extension, not an emergency. I just want to Is that clarify. what the resolution says? Yes. Yes. Oh, because my agenda said differently. You want me to read it, it over? So which is, is it a Let me see. It's just, just an extension. It's just an extension. extension. Okay. So I'll just reread the title. Okay. A resolution authorizing an extension of the agreement with Unitemp 26 World Fair Drive, Unit D, Somerset, New Jersey, 08873 for maintenance and repairs to the HVAC at Freddie Pole Hill Law and Justice Complex up to an additional 60-day period commencing January 1st, 2020 through February 28th, 2020, an amount not to exceed 6000 Is there a motion to adopt? Move. Councilman Wheels and Councilman Wooten. On the motion. Seeing a roll call, Councilman Coley. Yes. Councilman Jackson. Yes. Councilman Johnson, Jr. Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson. Yes. Councilwoman Williams. Yes. Councilwoman Wooten. Yes. Council President Eason. Yes. 437-2019-WO, a resolution authorizing the City of Orange Township to submit certain project application received from the Orange community for inclusion within the County of Essex Community Development Block Grant application for the year 2020. Is there a motion to adopt? Move. Councilwoman. Second. Councilwoman Wooten. On the motion. Seeing on roll call, Councilman Coley. Yes. Councilman Jackson. Yes. Councilman Johnson, Jr. Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson. Yes. Councilwoman Williams. Yes. Councilwoman Wooten. Yes. Council President Eason. Yes. 438-2019-WO, a resolution supporting Assembly Bill A-5012 requiring public school districts to provide instruction on the dangers of electronic cigarette usage as part of the New Jersey Student Learning Standards in Comprehensive. Motion to adopt. Move. Second. Councilwoman Williams, Councilwoman Wooten. On the motion, seeing a roll call, Councilman Coley. Yes. Councilman Jackson. Yes. Councilman Johnson, Jr. Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson. Yes. Councilwoman Williams. Yes. Councilwoman Wooten. Yes. Council President Eason. Yes. 439-2019-WO, a resolution author authorizing and ratifying a contract with Millennium Consultants, LLC, 60 Columbia Road, Morristown, New Jersey, 07960, an amount not to exceed $49,992 for professional grant writing services. Motion to adopt. Move. Councilwoman Williams. Second. Councilwoman Wooten. On the motion. Seeing on roll call, Councilman Coley. Yes. Councilman Jackson. Yes. Councilman Johnson, Jr. Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson. Yes. Councilwoman Williams. Yes. Councilwoman Wooten. Yes. Council President Eason. Yes. Resolution 440-2019-WO, a resolution to hold an executive closed session to discuss contract negotiations and pending lit litigation matters. Potential litigation matters. Potential litigation matters. Is there a motion to adopt? Move. Second. Second. Councilwoman Williams and Councilwoman 
A councilman, yeah. councilman yeah. Wooten. Yeah. Roll call, Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson, Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Yes. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Easton? Y yes. Can I get a motion to enter into executive session? Move. Move. Second. Second. <laughs> motion by Councilman Johnson, Jr., second by Councilman Jackson. Have a good night. Roll call, Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson, Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Yes. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yep. Yes. Council President Easton? Yes. We are entering into executive session at 10.03 p.m. We are now reconvening at 10.24 p.m., the regular meeting. Uh, can I get a motion to extend the meeting? Move. Second. Second. Be glad to extend the meeting. Ten minutes. Williams. Uh, Our first one this year. Johnson, yeah. Jr. <laughs> Roll call, Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson, yes. Jr.? Yes. <laughs> Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Yes. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Easton? Yes. Okay, we've extended the meeting. Resolution 402-2019. A resolution approving a loan purchase and sale agreement between the city and AHAF Investments, LLC, in, in connection with the city acquisition of block 3601 lots 1, 2, 33 through 38, block 3702 lot 6 and block 3601 lots 3, 4, 5, and 18, authorizing the mayor to execute the loan purchase and sell agreement on behalf of the city for the purchase of a foreclosed loan and mortgages pertaining to such property and authorizing the business administrator to take certain actions in connection with any share of sale relating thereto. Can I get a motion to adopt? Move. Second. Second. Councilman Coley and Councilman Williams. On the motion, seeing our roll call, Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson, Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Yes. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Easton? Yes. Is there any new business? Where is that? Is there any pending business? Where is my? Just one. Is there? Go ahead, I'm sorry. Okay, y'all ready to adjourn. Is there a motion to adjourn? Wait, Council, wait, wait, Council, wait, wait, Council, Council President, can we just announce the first meeting for January, the date and everything? January the 7th. It's the first meeting in January. January 7th. We will have it corrected on the website tomorrow. Okay. Wonderful. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. So you too. All right. Stay safe. Happy Kwanzaa, everybody. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Can we get a move? Yeah, move. Council Second. Oh, and Council Wooten. Merry Christmas. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Meeting adjourned at 1027. Special meeting tonight, everybody. It was great. Coley and Wooten.